Kevin, and welcome to Boston on a rainy day where it's been part of the discussion really all morning and into the afternoon what to do with this weather situation. But they've decided to start on time for game four, the American League Division Series on FS1 presented by Doosan. It was all Astros in Houston with a pair of 8-2 wins, but the Red Sox offense comes alive in game three, winning 10-3 to force this fourth game. And now they try to get it back to Houston for a game five in a couple of nights. With David Cohn and A.J. Pruszynski, I'm Joe Davis. J.P. Morosi joins us in a moment. And I know we're going to start on time, but this whole weather thing adds another layer when you're getting ready as a starting pitcher, and especially in the context of the postseason, the strategy for these managers. Well, it really does. I think the pressure's on the managers. You know, as a former starting pitcher, the worst-case scenario was always the delay at the start because then you'd sit around the clubhouse, you're brooding, you're drinking probably too much coffee at times. <laughs> so the fact that they're starting on time, I think, really is an advantage to the starting pitchers. You're talking about the managers and the pressure on them. You know, the Red Sox offense came alive yesterday but it was all the bottom of the order and so John Farrell shakes things up at the top. Absolutely and he needed to Xander Bogarts was in September was the hottest player for the Boston Red Sox but guess what in this ALDS he's 0 for 14 so what do you do you flip flop him and Dustin Pedroia Pedroia is a veteran guy won the World Series been there done that bogey struggled obviously but you give him a chance to sit back watch Pedroia's at bat relax take a breath and go up there second to face Charlie Moore. We're talking about strategy for the managers in this time of year and especially this year it's about managing the bullpens. What's it look like for Houston down there today. Well, Every game except for one so far has been how quick can you get to the bullpen. Well there was thoughts today by A.J. Hinch to start Joe Musgrove instead of Charlie Morton because of the weather. Well they decided to go with Charlie Morton because of the on time start. He needs to give them some length. They lost their long guy in McCullers. They still have Musgrove. Yes. Ken Giles is available for two innings. Liriano is a possible matchup lefty. Gregerson can come on flipping that slider but everybody anybody anytime be ready because A.J. Hinch wants to end this series today in Boston not go back to Houston for anything could happen in game five. Big story yesterday was David Price throwing the four innings but he needed 57 pitches to do it not available today. So what does that leave John Farrell with. Well we talked to him before the game and uh, Joe you mentioned hey uh, what do you think five innings and Farrell's jumped at that chance. Yes he would love to get at least five innings out of Rick Porcello today and I think the the big decision for Farrell is is if it goes similar to yesterday's game and you've got two or three runs on the board in the first three innings do you pull the plug and do you go to Chris Sale and play that big trump card I think that's in the back of everybody's minds right now Chris Sale's itching to get back out there. But do you really pull that card in this game. There's no tomorrow you might have to No, and that you may have Craig Kimbrell for two innings at the back end. It is game four the American League Division Series the Astros and the Red Sox with the first pitch next. Glad you're with us for game four of the ALDS the Astros and the Red Sox from Fenway Park and here come the Astros for the first inning. Here's the lineup. Springer Reddick and Altuve at the top with Correa in the middle with Gonzalez and Bregman Gurriel the four hit day yesterday out of the bottom of the order Evan Gaddis slides in at DH even though there's a right hander on the mound and Brian McCann does the catching for AJ Hinch's club. They face off with a reigning Cy Young Award winner in the American League and Rick Porcello whose follow up season has been a disaster. He goes from winning Cy Young to allowing the most home runs in the league and to having the most losses in the league at 17. He did give you innings though over 200 innings pitched and uh, even though it was a disappointing season kind of a reversal of fortune fortunes for Porcello. They still feel like you know he's going to get them at least five maybe six innings today. Trying to get the Red Sox into a game five. Astros trying to move on to the ALCS off we go in game four with a strike over the outside corner. Tony how about that first pitch out of the stretch. For a guy that's been a starter pretty much his whole career he had one inning where he came in a relief in Houston maybe he found something out of the stretch. Yeah there's just less moving parts and you just feel like you simplify things and worry about your release point. George Springer leading things off for the Astros that rides in on him it's one and one. He did have two innings in relief and in, in, uh, earlier in the series and threw very well from the stretch and AJ you mentioned that and maybe he did feel something. 
trying to do something nobody's been able to do for Boston, and that is keep Houston off of the board in the first inning. Seven runs in the first inning in the three games. That's it on Springer, fouls it off, one and two. Well, if there's been one consistent in this series so far, it's been the Astros scoring runs early, jumping on these starting pitchers for the Red Sox, and early exits for the Red Sox starter. So we'll see if Porcello is able to hold them down for the first time in four games in this series. George Springer starting the day for the Astros driving a ball to left center field that will reach the monster ricochets to Bradley his throw to second not in time and a leadoff double for George Springer. Tony I heard you talk about this earlier. Hey are you a sinker guy or a four seam high fastball guy. Well he gets ahead with the sinker. And then he tries to trick him with the four seam high fastball. Well, you don't trick the Houston Astros with four seam fastballs right down the middle. And George Springer proceeds to bang it off the monster for a leadoff double. And here we go again. It's one of the hardest things to do is to feature two different grips early in the game. You always, you know, always found you had to establish one and then work the other one in. And you saw it right there. Caught in between. Instead of getting it up, it stays down right in the hitting zone. So runner at second to start the day against Porcello and Josh Reddick to the plate for the Astros. Taking ball one inside. What a frustrating day it was yesterday for Josh Reddick. He had a home run robbed by Mookie Betts and then later in the game had a chance to make a fabulous rob of a Jackie Bradley ball but instead it hit off his glove and went out for a homer. On this 1 0, he fouls it off. Post game yesterday, they're in the food room and tension a little bit. They've finally lost in the series. Austin put some pressure on. Somebody asked Reddick, Did you think you got that first one that, that Betts wound up catching? And he said, Ah, you know, he's close. Good play by Mookie. Jose Altuve says to Reddick, Well, you hit a home run just for the other team <laughs> later in the game with that ball deflecting off his glove. It broke the tension a little bit in that Astros clubhouse. The 1 1. He stabs a bunt at it, falls behind 1 and 2. That's what we were talking about yesterday. There's the almost home run, like yeah. you said, Joe. The frustration on Josh Reddick's face, and then. As a Jose Altuve so eloquently put it, yeah, you hit a home run, but for the other team, and more frustration from Reddick. It's a bad feeling when you think you have an easy play and you pop it over the fence, and Jackie Bradley will take it and trot around the bases. A one-two, and that's wide of the bag. Still a ball and two strikes. It's a sign of a tight-knit team that that soon after a game you can get on each other like that and kind of ride each other, or rib each other, and. You know Reddick's a high intensity guy so that, that kind of did break the ice according to A.J. Hinch. That's a good thing. I'm all for that kind of stuff. You, you want to hear that stuff. You want to hear the stories of guys because you're with each other for so long and A.J. Hinch was, was proud to tell the story like hey look at our guys look how relaxed we are. Look how much fun we're having here. Springer off of second after the leadoff double another one two is in the dirt and away from Vasquez and up to third goes Springer. Totally changes the equation here. The Astros again knocking on the door in the first inning. Curveball grip you can see on the side the spin going down. Looked like Vasquez thought he was it was going to get there in the air and AJ you could speak to that better. I know that's tough for a catcher to read but apparently he thought he could pick it and all of a sudden it's back to the screen and uh, there's some damage done with the runner advancing to third here with nobody out. Well, I guarantee you Christian Vasquez will see that after the game and, and tell you. I need to block that ball. He tried to kind of pick it and kept his body in front of hit off his wrist and got away. But you have to make Josh Reddick get the guy to third not not give him third. Reddick making Porcello work a 2 2 is low and he's worked it full. The Astros have seen Rick Porcello once this season and it's not like many of the guys that are throwing in this series where it was a week ago when they played the final four games of the regular season. Back in June they lit him up. 
Seven runs over six innings. It's not personal, Rick. I've done it to just about everybody. Top offense in baseball all season. Seventh pitch of the at bat to Josh Reddick. Is up and in for ball four. So the Astros at the corners, still nobody out in this scoreless first inning, and here comes Jose Altuve. Good at bat from Reddick there, laying off a couple of change ups down in the zone and working the walk. The beat just goes on and on and on for the Astros, especially in the first inning. Lead off double, wild pitch. Good at bat by Reddick to walk, and guess what? Now you get to face Jose Altuve, who has. He's barely done anything in the series, Joe. I mean, he hasn't made any outs. Yeah, yeah. He's been up there 14 times and reached 11 times. And it includes the three home runs in game one. Takes ball one. Let's start that Porcello made against the Astros back in June. He allowed a home run to Altuve. Two and out. I know we talked about Rick Porcello needing wanting to get five innings, but if you're John Farrell right now and the way this is going, you look up 13 pitches, six strikes, runners on the corners, no outs. He's going to have somebody up here pretty rapidly, I have a feeling. Could it be Chris Sale? Available at some point today if Farrell wants to go that route. He's already out in the bullpen. El Tuve smacks one to second. They get one and two. They'll take it, conceding the run from third to put the Astros in front one nothing. But a 4-6-3 double play perhaps limits what the Astros can do in the first. Huge, absolutely huge double play here. Porcello kind of slows it down. When he did that, I'm not sure they were going to be able to get Altuve, but Altuve once again hits the ball so hard that even with the deflection, a nice turn by the Red Sox, and they give up the run, but you'll gladly trade that first and third and no outs, one run for two outs with the struggling start. I'm not sure if it, Porcello got a piece of that. He got a little assist from the mound as well, but that looked like, you know, you said, A.J., it was hit hard. He got a little assist. I'm not sure if it was his glove or the mound. Maybe a little bit of both. You see a big bounce off of that mound that was tailor made for Pedroia to, to be able to turn. And he was screened by the second base umpire, Marty Foster, and was still able to make a clean play. So the bases are empty with Carlos Correa. It was homer twice. And you see on that graphic, has not swung and missed all series. That's remarkable. To have swung 50, 25 times in this series and not have swung and missed for a kid this young with this much talent. I mean, I used to swing and miss in BP sometimes, Tony. I don't know <laughs> how you go three games without doing it. Here comes an 0 1. He watches it miss, ball one. Well, it's a common theme for this Astros offense all year. Remarkably, the slugging percentage collectively, but also the contact percentage. Very rare you see those combinations. Up and down the lineup. Two and one. Now they're the first team in more than two decades to lead the league in runs and fewest strikeouts. Well, the game has gone away from that. Home runs and strikeouts and three true outcomes that everyone's talking about home runs, walks, strikeouts. And the Astros, for being the analytical team that they're supposed to be, they've kind of shied away from that one big part of it. Porcello brings it to one and that's way outside ball three. It's one thing the Astros approach Joe does as well is that chases pitchers out of the zone because they're so aggressive on the first or second pitch and you see Porcello feels like he's got to throw a perfect pitch and next thing you know you're, you're in a hitters count three and one. 
More balls and strikes in this inning for Porcello. It's downhill with a 3 1, and that's ball four, second free pass issue. A little bit sleepy here at Fenway so far today. The weather's part of that, leading to some empty seats, but then this lethargic start from Rick Porcello, and they're still waiting for something to get excited about. But two gone in the first inning. Here's Marwin Gonzalez. They checked a third, no swing, ball one. Adam leaning at first for the throw off mark. Rick Porcello, even with the Cy Young campaign last year, did not fare well in the postseason. Game one of the American League Division Series, which wound up a sweep against Cleveland. He gave up five runs over four and a third. So the starting pitching issues for Boston this year, that's an extension of what the problem was in last year's early exit. The 1 0 pitch. Got a piece of the arm, it looks like, and he's aboard. Some of the fans arguing that it got part of the bat. John Farrell saying, I don't want to be the next Joe Girardi. <laughs> this looked like back, left elbow, left handed hitter. He starts to swing and see a great view by our camera guys of the back, left elbow. And when the ball is coming in as a hitter, you see it out of the hand as a strike and it keeps boring in. So you start and then, oh no, it's too late. It's going to hit me. And that hurts when it hits that spot. You talk to Keith Hernandez who's in the studio now about the style of hitting nowadays and guys leading with the knob of the bat and bringing their hands into a lot of hit batters in today's modern approach. And another example right there is that ball's not that far inside but Gonzalez starting to swing and kind of goes right into it. He lead with the knob of the bat and he goes right into that pitch. So puts him at first and second with two out. Not a pretty start for Rick Porcello. Still a chance though to limit the Astros to one with Correa at second and Gonzalez at first and Alex Bregman coming to the plate. Ball one. Bregman a home run in this series. That was in game one when him and Altuve went back to back in the first inning. Only 23 years old in his first full major league season. That's ah, a strike and it's one and one. And a mock cheer from the Fenway faithful that Porcello got a strike. It's got to be a bad feeling, Coney, when you. You're trying, you're giving everything you got, and you, you're struggling, and then you throw one strike, and the crowd gives you a standing ovation. You definitely notice it out there, too. <laughs> the sarcasm is dripping. Two on, two out. And a foul tip makes it one and two. With a light missed falling. Game for the ALDS. Astros one away, one went away from the championship series. Red Sox trying to force game five. One two. Porcello limits the damage in the first. The Astros settle for one. The Red Sox come to bat after this.
Red Sox playing from behind again to the bottom of the first we go and John Farrell sends this lineup to the plate. AJ talked about it off of the top but a change at the top of the order. Pedroia to bat lead off for the first time since early September with Bogart sliding down to second trying to get him going. Same with Ben Intendi. Everything's come from here on out with Ben Smoreland and Ramirez and Devers, Vasquez and Jackie Bradley Jr. rounding out the group that'll go after Charlie Morton. The veteran on the mound for Houston is in his 10th season. Career high 14 wins and particularly good down the stretch to earn a start here in the division series. Kind of changed his approach. Uh, was more of a sinker ball a la Rick Porcello was but somehow found three to four miles an hour on his fastball and now he's become almost a four seam cutter guy. And it's miraculous that you can change like that in the middle of your career but he's done it. His first pitch is low to Pedroia. And you see 95 right out of the right out of the first pitch he was a 90 91 92 and all of a sudden now 95 plus. Yeah career year for the 33 year old. Grew up not too far from here in Connecticut, but as a Yankees fan, and now making his second career postseason start. First one was really good while he was a Pirate. Game four of the division series against St. Louis. Gave up just two runs over five innings. Two and one. Horton's one of the guys that we mentioned earlier that has faced these lineups very recently in his final start of the regular season two runs over five and a third AJ Hinch got him out of there having thrown only 64 pitches knowing this was a possibility two and two on the leadoff man Pedroia I'm pretty sure if he could give him that today AJ Hinch would be more than happy with that performance and in what could be a clinching game four for the Astros. Finished September two on a good note, four and one record for Morton. In the, the mid twos for an ERA. Pedroia taps it to first. Here's Guriel for the first out. Now the Red Sox exploding for those ten runs yesterday without the top of the order hitting, and that all begins with Xander Bogart. So in three games, as the leadoff man is 0 for 14. So John Farrell sliding him down to the two spot hoping that seeing the first at bat of the game can help him settle in a little more and they need to get this guy going. Yes they do. There's no doubt they need Xander Bogarts if they're not only going to win this game in this series but continue the run the Red Sox hope to have in the postseason they got to find a way to get this guy going. He looks at ball one. And it's ironic after game before game three yesterday we asked him John Farrell hey any thoughts to moving bogey he gave us a stern look and a no. And then today he goes out and do it after they scored 10 runs yesterday. One spot down to the two hole. Now Morton overthrowing just about everything. Definitely a little pumped up right now. It's understandable. And you know, a lot of talk about the first inning and so much damage across the board and on in both leagues in this postseason. It's always the toughest inning for a starting pitcher. The 2 0. Ball three. Now why is that I, I never understood that because as a position player you're ready to go so as a starting pitcher you think oh I go out there and warm up and throw 40 pitches 50 pitches you think you'd be ready to go does it change that much from the bullpen two different mounds and a clean skin as we say meaning you've got to get your holes dug out your alignment you dig out a hole in front of the rubber you dig out a hole where you land and it's completely thrown in a different direction than the bullpen mound so. You know, getting your alignment right, getting those holes just right where you land are very important. Bogart slashes one the other way, way back to right center field. Bogart comes alive with a solo shot to tie the game in the first. Man, that John Farrell is smart, isn't he? As a manager, look at him, drop him one spot. But he took three, he had three good takes to get to 3 0, got into a 3 1 count, got a fastball from Charlie Morton up and out over the plate. 
for a home run into the bullpen in right center. And now Benintendi strike one. You can see around a two seamer kind of runs back to the barrel. That's something we we thought he had gotten away from more. Kind of reverting back to his old style and that's the problem if it doesn't stay away it runs over the heart of the plate. Softly hit the second Altuve throws Benintendi out two gone. When Bogey hit this. Just a nice swing not trying to do too much staying inside the ball hit, driving it to right center take what they give you. But I didn't think it was going to be high enough from our vantage point. I knew it was over Springer's head. I just didn't think it was going to be high enough to get out. And it just carries into the bullpen and a elated Boston Red Sox bullpen when the ball clears the fence. Near right just barely does. A 1 1 game here in the first inning. With two out, the base is empty. Mookie bats the hitter. Now, Bats has not looked like himself, dealing with both wrist and thumb problems. John Farrell saying that he yeah, is good enough to go. Mookie Betts, though, even admitting that he's probably not going to be 100%, regardless of how long this postseason goes. One ball, one strike. We saw yesterday, guys, I think what has kind of been a snapshot of this season, that even when Mookie Betts isn't hitting like an all star, like an MVP, He's still so valuable to this group with what he does with his defense. That's ripped to left field. Marwin Gonzalez plays it off the monster and holds Betts to a long single. He's back into first safely ahead of the throw. That looked okay on that swing. His wrist looked like it feeling pretty good on this curveball here from Charlie Morton. Just kind of a spinner, Coney. And again, Marwin Gonzalez, give him credit. He played that beautifully to hold Mookie Betts to a single. And they almost got him back at first because of the wide turn. But that, that monster out there in left field is tough to play. But Marwin Gonzalez plays it perfectly to hold Mookie Betts to a single. You have to be careful as a base runner with both Correa and Altuve, who are always one step ahead of the game and will throw behind the runners. The look on Altuve's face when Correa came up firing right there was great. Ooh. Look at this look on Altuve's face. He's like, it's coming to me. No, no. <laughs> Almost like he made his mind up before he even saw where the runner was. And it extended for Mitch Moreland. Now, we've talked about this in the first three games of this series. The Red Sox have yet to get the running game going. With Charlie Morton, who's slower to the plate, McCann, who hasn't thrown very well all season, Mookie Betts' speed. You have to send him here at some point in this at bat, and better early than late. It's a great point and that's part of the Boston offensive output all year long. We've noted their their lack of home runs last in the league and home runs this year but running the bases not only just stealing bases. Now look where Bregman is the third normal third baseman is that shortstop so if Betts does go and makes it he might look to go to third. So Bregman better be heads up because he's not used to playing there there's usually someone standing closer to third so if he does get a jump and makes it. Alex Bregman you better could be a foot race to third. Astros employ more shifts than any team in baseball. And a little bit unique in that they slide the shortstop Correa to the right side. A lot of teams you see the third baseman go and play on the right side to keep the shortstop home but Bregman so good defensively they're comfortable with him over there and Correa their best defender so they put him in the spot where most of the balls hit are hit according to the data. There he goes. McCann's throw. Nowhere close to in time. And Betts is stolen second. And a pretty easy stolen base here for Mookie Betts, like we talked about. Gets a good jump, picks a curveball. Morton slower to the plate. McCann hasn't thrown that great, but just an easy, not even that great of a jump. He had a little bit of a hesitation, but he knew that, hey, I can make this easily. And he did. Uh, they had your thought in mind AJ as Correa covers instead of Bregman to guard against potentially Mookie Betts taking advantage there. 
Chance for Mitch Moreland to put the Red Sox in front. Charlie Morton brings him a 1-1. Moreland dribbles it foul strike two. And yesterday Mitch Moreland had a big hit for the Red Sox by beating the shift and going the other way. Well again because of the defense the Astros employed the pretty much the whole left side of the infield is wide open except if he hits it right at Bregman at third base. So if I'm the hitter right here it's easier said than done. I get it but you got to try to go to the left field right here. One two. Three hits yesterday scored three runs. Mitch Moreland's been a nice pickup for Dave Dombrowski and these Boston Red Sox. Gained a lot of respect this summer playing through a broken toe for a couple of months. Hitting more than 20 home runs for the third time in four seasons. Playing solid defense. Good clubhouse guy. And batting here in the first inning with a chance to give the Red Sox the lead. Thirty two year old Mitch Moreland takes it in the dirt and kicks away from McCann and Betzels at third. McCann arguing that there was interference on Moreland and he's going to get it. Well, another slider down and in and. McCann does a pretty good job of you know at least keeping it somewhat in front of him but he's going to go check for the swing. That's right what here. it is. It's a check swing and strike three to finish the inning but it's tied at one after one. Tied at one after one. Game four of this ALDS. Rick Porcello to work against Yuli Gurriel. Yesterday became the first Cuban born player with a four hit game in the postseason. It's rather surprising considering all the great Cuban players that have played and had really good careers to be the first one. Tell me you're the first anything, it's usually a good thing, especially a stat like that. Now the Astros scored the three runs in the first inning and that was all but they had 13 hits on the day problem was that they left 10 men aboard. And the bigger problem that they gave up 10. Porcello fires 0 2 and Guriel lifts one in the air towards the seats. Betts will give it a look but it's out of play. For coverage of this game in Spanish, please tune into Fox Deportes. Guriel is a Cuban star. 15 years down there in the professional league. He's considered one of the top players. Hit above 300 over his 15 years. Hit well above 300. 335 in his time there. Shoots another base hit into right field. Betts dives to try and stop it, but it slips by him. And Goriel will wind up at third. We'll see how they score it, but either way, it's another base hit for Yuli Goriel. Well, at some point, the Red Sox are going to get tired of throwing him fastballs out over the plate. And Mookie Betts makes a great effort here trying to knock it down. But once it gets past him, it's an easy, an easy triple for Goriel. But again, they're trying to go up with two How about sinking a ball in on some of these right-handed hitters and, and get them off that four-seamer away? Marcelo having a hard time getting above the strike zone with that four with that four-seamer. As Vasquez almost standing up Yogi Berra style, trying to get him up there. And Mookie Betts a, a, a good effort. Evan Gaddis now with a man in third and nobody out for the second time in his many innings for Houston. Goes after the first pitch strike one. Normally it's Carlos Beltran at the DH spot with a right hander on the mound and Beltran has good numbers against Porcello but A.J. Hinch liked this matchup today with Gaddis. 
And he talked about Porcello being more of a four seam pitcher now as opposed to a two seam guy. And he thought that fit into the strength and the swing path of Gaddis, especially here in Fenway Park. A lot of the numbers that Beltran has accrued throughout his career. That's a different Carlos Beltran. Gaddis out in front of it, off speed pitch, 0 and 2. It's amazing to me. We're talking about Porcello being a sinker ball or four seamer. Even talking to the two managers, Farrell's talking about he needs to establish a sinker. And A.J. Hinch on the Astros side is saying this guy's a four seam pitcher. So not only does Rick Porcello struggle, which one is he? The, both managers and the two teams are having a hard time identifying which one Rick Porcello is. Morristown, New Jersey native, 28 years old, looking for a strikeout here. He's got it with the elevated fastball. We'll go through the sequence here. And first, there it is, AJ, that two seamer in running off the plate gets Gaddis around it. And then the circle change, a really big pitch last year for Purcello and Gaddis way out in front of it, more speed than location. And then finally, up above the zone. First one he's been able to get there all day and give Vasquez credit. He keeps trying to get him to go up there and he got it finally. But the thing is, the first pitch set up that hole at bat. The sinker in off the plate. You saw the look on Gaddis's face like. Oh man that's a tough pitch for me to handle it set up the entire at bat infield comes in with a man at third and one gone Ryan McCann turns his shoulder on a strike over the inside corner McCann two for eleven in this series. Seven time all star with the Braves now in his 13th big league year. And an 0 1 pitch. Swings and misses at a high fastball, and Porcello trying to bully his way out of this jam. More balls than strikes in the first inning. Exclusively strikes here in the second. Two. Ripped foul. I've seen Vasquez give multiple signs here with no man on second base. So it, it's odd. It's especially at home on the road. I've seen it, and I've and we've talked about that. But it's just odd that you would do that at home. There's nothing out there unless they think somebody's out in the crowd. Given something which has been known to happen in Toronto. Here they're going no sign because they just had a quick meeting. Another 0 2. Barely got a piece of a high fastball. But it's odd to me, Coney, that at home, okay, when we were in Toronto and I played in Toronto, we used to always do that because there was rumors of a guy in out in center field that was relaying stuff. But at home, especially with the tarp in center field covered right behind the mound and the batter's eye, you, you don't see that as much, but there. Maybe it's a comfort thing with Porcello out of the stretch. I don't know. Whatever it is, but it's just interesting that they're doing that. Another 0 2. Good stop from Christian Vasquez on ball one. Seems like every era has got their stories of gamesmanship and sign stealing going back to Ralph Branca and Bobby Thompson and the Dodgers and. Multiple signs with nobody on second base, and then Vasquez said, "Okay, this, this the old number one then." Except number one was a curveball, so obviously number one for Rick Porcello is a curveball. That's just more gamesmanship. Like, okay, a lot of everyone thinks number one is a fastball most of the time. Well, apparently, right there he put down one. Vasquez didn't look real happy about it. Porcello, that's what he felt like throwing, and it was a curveball. So something also to look for. Yeah, the body language between pitcher and catcher, you can pick up on the frustration. Of course, the Red Sox are on the other side of a bit of a controversy as far as stealing signs earlier this year. One ball and two strikes. Here comes Porcello. 
And the dirt again in the count evens. I mean, AJ, I'm sure that can get frustrating. When you're on the mound, you have a meeting before the game, and then all of a sudden you got a pitcher that's shaking you off out there. I mean, you, it's got to be frustrating back there. Oh, it's one of my favorite things of all time, being a catcher. There's times where El Duque, one of your old teammates, and a, a great pitcher, huge postseason pitcher, you go out to the mound, you say, Duke, what do you think? And he give you exactly what you want to throw. You jog back to the mound, and he shake you. And you're like, wait, we just talked about this. He's like, I changed my mind in the three seconds. Tries to lay off and does to work the count full. It's been a good at bat from Brian McCann, who find himself in an 0-2 hole. It's now three and two, with a go-ahead run at third and one out in the second. McCann swung the bat well yesterday, with not much to show for it. Pretty good at bat going here, laying off a low and high. Three two back to back K's for Porcello. Just a nasty slider cutter combination there from Rick Porcello. Three two known for more of a curveball change up. The last pitch Brian McCann is looking for and just a great pitch by Porcello. But now. We talked about it before. Two outs after guy on third with no outs. You can't relax. You got to get George Springer out here to finish the inning. Top of the Houston order. Man at third and two out. George Springer watches a perfectly placed strike one. Doubled and scored Houston's run. Astros have had chances for more than that single run through these two innings, but Porcello has been able to buckle down with runners in scoring position. He struck out three and induced a double play. Well, pitcher has one idea what you want to throw, and the catcher has another idea, so. People want to limit mound meetings, but in an important situation like this, what if they said, hey, you can't go out to the mound, Christian Vasquez? It, it wouldn't work. Inside ball up. You can see the rain picking up a little bit. Started this game on time. Now there's rain in the forecast for much of the day, thinking there may be a window here to be able to. Get through at least a chunk of this game, not wanting to play on the off day, the travel day tomorrow, if it got that far. In the dirt, two and one. The current forecast very muggy. Some empty seats at Fenway as a result. Still a good vibe in here. Still a playoff vibe for game four. Hope that the weather cooperates for a few hours this afternoon. Springer puts the Astros in front. A two out base hit for George Springer to score Yuli Gurriel, and the Astros lead it 2 1. A lot of pitches away after the first pitch sinker in you can see almost like Vasquez wanted a front door slider there. That, that pitch selection shocks me. Why would you throw a front pitch. You haven't established a sinker into any right handed hitter. So why would you try to trick him with the front door and front door means you started off the plate in breaking ball and bring it back. But that ball starts middle and ends up. Even more in the middle. It, it was an interesting choice. The first time they've tried that in a big spot. That gets Josh Reddick to the plate with two out. And he takes ball one. So the Astros with one in the first and one in the second against Porcello. You get caught in between as a starting pitcher, and to AJ's point, you know, you're trying to do too much too early in the game. Front door, back door, sliders, four seamers up, two seamers down. Trying to mix in everything too soon instead of establishing something like a two seamer in on these riders. On these right handed batters. 
especially Houston, who's so aggressive. All of these right-handed hitters hit for power, and they swing early. There's been a lot of talk about pushing them off the plate, establishing in. We've only seen a couple of those type of pitches so far today. Bring it first with two out and a 1 1. Reddick bloops one left center field. Benintendi won't get there. He'll fire to third. It's a wide throw. Springer will throw on the brakes and everybody holds. So back to back two out hits from the top of the Astros order. And they're at first and second. It looked like Springer drew this throw, and Benintendi kind of jumped the gun a bit. He almost could have thrown behind the runner. Springer almost got off too far on this on his round right there. You see, boy, he's kind of hung out to dry there, and Benintendi came up and committed to throw right to third base and threw wide. He got lucky it didn't get into the dugout. Absolutely, the Red Sox caught a huge break right here. The ball hits the pole, and instead of ricocheting kind of or in the, just on the corner, instead of ricocheting into the dugout for extra bases, it. Bounces straight back to Devers at third. A lot of odd quirks and angles in this park, but that's probably one they didn't think of when they discussed the ground rules. We had we had a ground rule discussion here, and that one never came up. Second baseman, number 27, Jose. And AJ Hinch taking a close look at where that hit. Just off of the padding on the field side of the pole, staying in play. And so the runners remain at first and second. The inning kept alive for Jose Altuve. That's ball one. Altuve grounded into a double play his first time. Still, though, one of the great starts to a postseason run of any player in baseball history. Eight for his first 11. Joe Kelly getting loose. Kelly got lost in the shuffle yesterday because of what David Price did. He wound up getting the win in the game, though. It was so critical coming in for Doug Fister in the second. One and one. Yeah, Altuve one of, is, is one of those hitters that will be real aggressive one at bat and then kind of eyeball you the next at bat looking for a pitch. Oh, don't let him fool you, Coney. Porcello would have laid the first pitch in there. He would have hacked at it. Hacks at this one, falls behind one and two. A good swing there. Really having to work Rick Porcello over these first two innings. Two runs on four hits, two walks, a hit batsman. And with two on and two out, he's ready for a one two pitch to perhaps the MVP of the American League. Ball two. It's almost like the Astros hitters know that a, a four seamer is coming with two strikes because they they're looking for one right down the middle and there's no there's no flinch because he hasn't done anything to set it up. But every time they get two strikes right away they go high. They go four seam high. Vasquez stands up and it's four seam high. So there's just I don't I, that's their game plan. They they were in the meetings. They have their scouting reports. Carl Willis has given it to him the pitching coach. But I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of confused by that Coney. Vasquez really almost erect in his stance behind home plate, imploring a high fastball from Porcello. Altuve watches that one miss in the dirt. Count goes full. Runners who get a head start. As a catcher, you try to establish your, your pitcher's strength most of the time. Well, Porcello, when I, having faced him a bunch of times and, and, and seen him pitch, 
sinker 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 well if you want to throw a high fastball off of that to change the team's eye a guy's eye level okay but to constantly throw that pitch when that hasn't been your strength maybe it is now maybe things have changed but it, it's just it's interesting that they would go that way every time Porcello with 52 pitches through one and two thirds a payoff pitch Altuve lays off and loads the bases. Pretty clear check swing from that angle. Vasquez wants it badly. I'm not going to get it here. But again, look, look at the location. It's it's neck high. 3 2, neck high. It's tough to get a swing out of a pitch that's a ball right out of your hand. How big of a deal is the rain on a pitcher trying to locate it? Well now once once the, the rain starts to come you start worrying about your footing just a bit. I don't think we're to that point yet but the spikes will uh, you know, will build up with mud and then it, it can affect your how you land and a little bit of slip. Correa with the bases loaded takes a strike. As this goes on it becomes more of an issue and. Every ball on the ground too. You know every every infielder that picks it up or outfielder is going to have a wet ball to deal with. So it, it will have an impact as this rain continues and picks up. And the infielders feet are just soaking wet. This has been a long inning for, for the Red Sox in the field. So their their feet are wet. They're full of mud. They're a little heavy right now. And Porcello gave up that leadoff triple but then had back to back strikeouts before running into this trouble against the top of the order. Now he's ready to throw his 30th pitch of the second. It's an 0 1 to Carlos Correa. Got it by him at the letters. Strike two. with single runs in each of the first two innings but they've stranded five and settle for a 2 1 lead to the bottom of the second play ball is MLB's initiative to inspire all forms of baseball and softball participation making play opportunities available and fun for everyone. To learn more, go to playball.org. And Ramirez wastes no time going after Charlie Morton's first pitch. That's strike one. He's really bad against Morton lifetime, but really good in this series. A four hit day yesterday. John Farrell's talked about it all summer into the fall. It's a different team when Hanley Ramirez produces. There you see second pitch, Charlie Morton. Sinking one in on Hanley Ramirez, and that's kind of the spot. Hey, you want to get a hot hit, hot hitter uncomfortable? Run one in on his hands, buzz him a little bit, make him move his feet, get him off that ball away. Goriel's had five hits in a row to right field on balls out over the plate. How about sinking one in on these guys? One and two. And he tried it again there. On that pitch, but he just yanked it out back out over the plate. But they were trying to go in again on Hanley Ramirez. Uh, one, two. Ramirez grounds one to the hole, and it's through for another base hit. He is five for five since the series shifted to Fenway. 
Well, light rain continuing to fall. Weather, big part of the discussion today. For the first time today, we bring in J.P. Morosi. Well, good afternoon, Joe, from my soggy perch besides the Red Sox dugout. It is raining here. The drizzle expected to continue. And crew chief Ted Barrett told me the heavy weather is due to arrive around 315 or 330 at which point in time we do expect a delay of some length and Joe that could be measured in hours and not minutes so the team's trying to avoid their key bullpen pieces until after that anticipated delay at JP that weather coming caused at least a discussion in the Houston clubhouse and in an AJ Hinch's office of going instead of Morton with Joe Musgrove because it could turn into something where you waste your starter at least you don't get him nearly as deep because he gets burnt with the weather coming. Well at the pace we're at with all the mound meetings we've had 315 330 it might be here in the top of the third at this rate with all these meetings and and talk back and forth between the but yeah that was discussed in, in, in a real possibility for the Astros. Rafael Devers ball one. And if you're talking about hours in terms of a delay then it's going to be hard to bring back a Charlie Morton even if he does settle in here for the next hour or so. There's a certain point where it just doesn't make sense to bring back a starter again after that long of a, a delay. Is that different for every guy what the length is that you're you know where you reach it and you're no longer coming back. It's definitely different uh, depending on style age you know, wear and tear Charlie Morton a power guy all of a sudden now at 33 years old his pitch count in much better shape at this point than Porcellos. There's his pitching coach Brent Strom. That's on the corner endeavors behind one and two. Charlie Morton in his 10th major league season and finally healthy. He's had four different operations over the last six years. Devers pulls one through for a base hit. That is back to back singles for the Red Sox to open the second. Morton trying to get his curveball going and kind of speeds up Devers is bat finds the hole you see him kind of around that curveball so the spin turns sideways just a bit not enough depth as Devers cuts it off and beats him to the pass and finds the hole. Interesting decision here for John Farrell early in the game do you bunt Christian Vasquez here do you let him hit it's been one of their hottest hitters down the stretch. The Astros are kind of in between. They have their corners in, and I think they're kind of expecting a bunt with Jackie Bradley on deck. But a tough decision right here because Hanley's not the fastest guy on second. So what do you do? Well, let's see. The show bunt that took ball one. And I think earlier in the year when Vasquez was struggling before he got hot in September towards the end of the year, they definitely this probably would have been a bunt almost 100% of the time. But now. The way he's swinging the bat, two for three in this ALDS, you give him a shot. Yeah, really, the last two months, Christian Vasquez was probably their most consistently good hitter, but still sharing time with Santa de Leon based on who the starting pitcher is on a given day. That's low as well, and it's 2 0. Oh. One thing Vasquez has always done, even from when he first came up, was usually give you a good at bat, meaning won't won't chase out of the strike zone. Yeah you can get him to swing and miss when you get ahead but early in the count he's always been good about getting a good pitch and, and, and trying to to fight your bat that way instead of wildly hacking early in the count. Three balls no strikes. Back to back singles from Ramirez endeavors to start the inning and now Vasquez walks the bases are loaded with nobody out.
And that brings out Brent Strom. That was almost too easy there. Four straight balls. Four straight balls right out of the hand. There was there was never a, a thought by Christian Vasquez, man, I might have to swing at one of these balls. They, as soon as they left Charlie Morton's hands, there were balls and easy calls for Wagner behind the plate. And so now Morton will face the nine hitter Jackie Bradley, and we've talked about it through the series, but the story with Bradley throughout his career when he's bad he's really bad when he's good he's really good he had a 29 game hitting streak at one point last year he's had a really bad stretch to finish the regular season but in the last two games has started to look like he's unlocking things drove in two runs with two hits in game two hit the three run home run aided by Josh Reddick a little bit yesterday but in a big spot here in a one run game in the second of game four ball one. talked about the lack of power the Red Sox have experienced all year that included no grand slams could Bradley provide the first and sitting in a one on one count you would think somebody would run into one with the bases I know they didn't hit a lot of home runs but man, you think Hanley Ramirez or Mitch Moreland or Dustin Pedroia would hit Pesky's pole did against us a couple years ago. I mean, you'd think they'd run into one, and it's it's remarkable. A cutter is in, and it's two and one. Jackie Bradley, who really struggled in the postseason last year, on a two-one pitch. Takes a borderline strike and it's two and two. Right at the bottom of the zone. Look at that movement. Morton's next one. He struck him out. Went through the back door for the first out of the second. Well, you can't make better pitches than this. You know, I mean, they are right on the borderline, right on the edges, and then back door, maybe around it a little bit. Give Brian McCann some credit, though. Both those pitches he caught beautifully. He kind of stole a couple strikes there for first pitcher Charlie Morton. A little bit of a delayed call there as well on that backdoor slider that probably came around the plate. Top of the order in Pedroia. Good stab by McCann to keep that thing from getting to the backstop with a tie and run standing at third. Well, John Farrell flipped the top two in the order. It paid off in the first inning when Xander Bogart hit a home run for his first hit of the series. Now the spotlight finds Pedroia. It's pop foul one and one. How many big moments has this man had in this ballpark through the years? 51 postseason games he's played in. And even though many of them he's been dealing with something physically, never once has he missed a postseason game with an injury. Right now it's a knee that he had operated on in the offseason. Aggravated several times throughout the year, but good enough. One and two. Well, you got to give Charlie Morton credit right here. He is making some really good pitches with his, with his back against the wall. Movement and location. When you combine this type of movement and that type of location, it becomes very hard for the hitters to square up anything. Two 
strikeout would be huge. Martin's one two. Pedroia stays alive. One thing about Pedroia, he's a high ball hitter. He, he, he's, he's diminutive in size, but if you throw the ball from his Red Sox letters up, he can get on top of the ball. He has a, a strange ability to be able to get on top of a high fastball. So if you notice, sinking the ball in from Morton, curveballs down. Why? Trying to induce a ground ball double play to get out of the inning and with zero damage. Another one, two. Takes it down and away. Count evens up. Bogarts do next. Astros getting single runs in each of the first two innings. Red Sox getting one in the first on Bogarts homer. Now the base is loaded with one out. And the 34 year old Dustin Pedroia takes strike three over the inside corner and lets Mark Wegner know about his displeasure. John Farrell's out of the dugouts argue as well. Pedroia here in a postseason game's got to be careful. John Farrell's been thrown out. In an era where managing the bullpens are so critical, Boston will be without its manager, John Farrell, for the final seven plus innings of this elimination game. feel like John Farrell had to get out there to protect Dustin Pedroia. Pedroia was livid. I give Mark Wagner credit the home plate umpire. He he tried he tried to walk away from Pedroia a couple times and Pedroia kind of went after him so he gave him chances. This pitch is on the plate but oh man he, as a hitter you see McCann reach back across and right away PD cannot believe that Wagner called that strike three. Similar pitch as Jackie Bradley Jr. Both of them sliders that look like they broke around the plate. Boston had the bases loaded with nobody out. He strikes out Bradley and Pedroia, and it falls on the shoulders of Xander Bogarts with two out. Went the other way with a home run his first time, and here looks at a fastball that paints the outside corner. The Red Sox feel like. The old cliche is you took the bat out of our hands and you can see there a backdoor slider around and this one the front door and same location almost around the plate according to the K zone so the Red Sox feel like they just had the bat taken out of their hands. And there's a sarcastic cheer from the Fenway faithful. We talked about it last inning with Rick Porcello runner on third gets two strikeouts to possibly end the end the momentum gives up a two out hit same thing on Charlie Morton two strikeouts to possibly get out of it Xander Bogarts see what you can do against Charlie Morton here on a one one outside ball two. Pedroia teetered on the edge of getting thrown out of this game. Instead, it's his manager, John Farrell. Ramirez at third, Devers at second, Vasquez at first. Morton's 2 1. Bogarts pops it up. In right field, Josh Reddick. And Charlie Morton with a magic act to get out of this second inning with no damage done. Red Sox squander a golden opportunity bases loaded nobody out and they don't score and in the process lose their manager John Farrell for the day ejected by home plate umpire Mark Wagner after a called strike three on Dustin Pedroia. 
So here we go to the third Rick Porcello back to work against Marwin Gonzalez five six and seven in the Astros order. That's ball one. And Chris Sale has started to warm in the Red Sox bullpen. And it would be a possibility John Farrell saying look game five is only a thing if you win game four. And they find themselves in a spot where they feel they need sale to get to that game five. They'll figure that out if they get there. And you knew it'd be early in the game too similar to what happened in yesterday's game with David Price. There was some thought coming into the series that Chris Sale could start this fourth game if the Red Sox were in this situation down to one. But with the way the Astros tagged him in game one and with it pretty clear that sales stuff has diminished later in seasons as he's gotten tired they steered away from that plan now to use him like they used David Price yesterday on a 2 0 Gonzalez looks at a fastball strike and to your point Joe sort of a concession too from the Red Sox to get sale warmed up before the rain comes the heavy rain obviously very tough decision making processes on both sides on how you how you play the rain the weather here knowing that the heavy stuff's coming down. It's a great point. We're about 45 minutes away from when JP reported the crew chief Ted Barrett told him we're expected to get hit by the worst of the weather. Gonzalez pulls one to the hole at second Pedroia from his knees for the first down. Speaking of Dustin Pedroia really interesting pitch by pitch here as he gets called out on strikes to finish the inning. Well ball one you see that's the one he wants right there fastball kind of in the middle then a ball off his shin. Good breaking ball by Morton he fouls off just missed breaking ball and then kind of the front door one that surprises Petey and the reactions immediate and he got manager John Farrell kicked out. Farrell did the right thing you got to protect your star player right there he rushed out. And Wagner did a lot to let him stay in the game both of them. Alex Bregman. Watch his one tail in there for a strike. Now let me ask you this he's thrown out and so technically he's not making decisions. How much is going on behind the scenes where John Farrell still involved managing that bullpen a little bit. Well there's a phone. There's a phone down there. I know they're not supposed to use it but there's also a long tunnel down there between the Red Sox clubhouse and the dugout so. Bregman flies it to right. Mookie bats two up two down. So unless an umpire is going to walk up that maze of a tunnel below the Red Sox dugout to the clubhouse. He's sitting there watching the game there. There'll be there can be a clubhouse guy there can be a player that's not on the roster there can be a starting pitcher Pomerantz that runs back and forth and gets suggestions maybe we should put it from John Farrell. Absolutely there's easy, there's an easy way to get messages back and forth. But back to that Pedroia sequence there boy you give Charlie Morton credit as well I mean we focus on the calls that are borderline or just off Charlie Morton made a lot of really good pitches. A strike on Goriel after, after loading the bases with the bait with nobody out and Jackie Bradley was upset but he didn't swing the bat in five pitches so I understand the last pitch might not have been a strike but he was given two fastballs on the inner part of the plate that he could have put in play and he didn't pull the trigger so could be frustration also from the Red Sox. Perfect opportunity right here for Porcello to buzz one in on Guriel. Two outs, nobody on to change something, and first two pitches away. Gets it by him, one and two. But again, another pitch away, Coney. At some point, you'd think, hey, let's try and sink one in on this guy's hands, make him think about something different, because every time they get ahead or early in the count, it's a ball away that he shoots to right field. Two balls, two strikes. A very few one, two, three innings in this series, and really in any series this postseason, with the exception of last night's Yankees Indians game. A little more pitching in that one nothing final. They play game four tonight on FS1. It's 
that's no small thing either when you, you look at Chris Sale out in the bullpen kind of slowing down his warm ups. If Porcello can get this out one two three boy you could just have him sit right back down. The last thing you want is him warming up a lot and then not coming in the game. Guriel lines it to deep center. Bradley's on his horse won't get there. Off of the wall. How about Yuli Guriel who is six for his last six. Today a triple and a double. And just another great job by Goriel. Look, they won it up. Here we go again. Fastball out over the plate. What does he do? Rockets it over Jackie Bradley's head and center. Jackie Bradley can cover a lot of ground. When a ball's hit that hard and that sharp directly over your head, Willie Mays isn't catching that ball. The beat goes on. For Guriel. So the Astros trying to cash in here with two outs with Evan Gaddis coming up. One of the four strikeout victims of Porcello so far. Strike one. One and one. And with Farrell thrown out of the game, Gary DeSarcina, the bench coach, assumes the active acting manager duties. And again, there can be lines of communication from the skipper, even though he's tossed out. Technically, there can't be, but you know. As Chris Sale continues to warm out in that Red Sox bullpen. Here's Porcello's 1 1 pitch. Gattis flips it in the air behind first. In that triangle, who wants it? Pedroia makes the catch fading away. And for the first time today, Rick Porcello puts up a zero. The Astros have gone one for seven with runners in scoring position and still lead it 2 1. Back at Fenway Park, Joe Davis, David Cohn, A.J. Pruszynski, and J.P. Morosi for Game 4 of the American League Division Series. Astros in front of the Red Sox, two games to one. And on the scoreboard here in Game 4, 2-1. As Charlie Morton throws one by Andrew Benintendi. So far this has been a game of missed opportunities. The Astros going one for seven with runners in scoring position. The Red Sox loaded the bases with nobody out against Morton last inning who was able to get out with no damage done. Another 23 year old Benintendi leading off the third cracking a base hit to right. Leadoff man on in front of Mookie Betts. He celebrated his 25th birthday over the weekend. Fourth major league season. Yeah, the debut when he was 21 years old, 2014. It was a bright spot, one of the worst seasons in franchise history. It was back to back last place finishes. Take one it ball, easy, no Joe. Strikes. Take I'm it sorry. easy. Those are AJ Brzezinski's Red Sox. Yeah, so 14, 14. I was on that team, so take it easy, okay? That, that that hurts. Well, they were the they were one of the worst teams in franchise history, besides <laughs> part of the catching situation. No, that was probably the thing that made it. So oh. it's okay. I understand. So you were around when Mookie was called up. I absolutely was, and he came up as a second baseman. And they were talking about this kid, Mookie Betts, and you're like, wait, what? Wait, what? Who? Because he wasn't in spring training. Never heard of him, and then you get to about June, and they're talking about this kid's destroying the minor leagues, and 
they're like well we can't put him at second Dustin Pedroia is there so we'll try him in the outfield he came up and took over for Jackie Bradley Junior in center field and you could see right away his kick could hit lines it to third Bregman to first a double play. Alex Bregman quick hands to get it out of the glove behind Benintendi at first two out. Just on the button. I mean a absolute rocket so much so that Benintendi really had no chance. You can see unless he freezes and reads right away that one step that's all he needed. You know, the old cliche freeze on a line drive that's the only chance he would have had and even then on that rocket it would have been close. People always say freeze on a line drive actually that never works because you always take that extra step so it's actually go back on a line drive because freezing always gets you out. Mitch Moreland inside the bag that's a fair ball. Reddick races to get it. Moreland's on his way to second with a two out double. Like he's done so many times this season and the inning kept alive with a tie run in scoring position. Well three hard hit balls in this inning so Charlie Morton a little bit fortunate because Moreland smokes one right down the line. Benintendi pretty well struck for the original base hit and then the double play and now this. A double play looms large now. Nice adjustment by Mitch Moreland there. They they got him on curveballs his first at bat. He goes up there, gets a curveball he likes, and mashes it down the right field line for a double. And brings up a guy that is red hot. And Hanley Ramirez. He's five for five in the two games here at Fenway Park. First pitch swinging strike one. Hanley the third Red Sox player to go four for four in a postseason game and the first one since the 1980s. Played with a ton of energy yesterday. He even started before the game when he brought out the flag the believe flag. With Boston down two games to none. Trying to be the sixth team in ALDS history to erase a 2 0 series deficit to win that series. Nine run at second, two out. Morton's 0 1. Rides in, ball one. Two of the five times where teams have erased 2 0 leads, it was the Red Sox that did it. 99, they did it against the Indians. 0 3, they did it against the A's. Martin's 1 1. Ramirez chases strike two. Well, here in the bottom of the third inning, Charlie Morton really walking a tightrope. Nine base runners for the Red Sox. Only one run on the board. The Astros one for seven with runners in scoring position. The Red Sox are 0 for four. Chris Sales ready to go for the middle innings, it appears. Second inning he's warmed up in. Check, check that actually seven base runners rather, but still a lot of base runners. Gotta believe Chris Sale is coming in. You don't get a guy that's a starter up twice in this situation and not bring him in. He has to come in at this point. Inside two and two.
it's fair the Red Sox would take the lead but it's just wide of the pole. A skyscraping foul ball from Hanley Ramirez and it remains a 2 1 Houston lead. Hanley needed a little Carlton Fisk back from the back in the old days here at Fenway Park but he leaned on it. He tried to stay there and draw it foul, but got to wave your arms, Hanley. He's leaning. Oh, but he knew it was foul. Just clips this curveball from Morton. Just a little bit ahead, a little bit out front, and Brian Butterfield and Mitch Moreland both checking out the, the angle to wish it fair. So we'll do the 2 2 again. Morton buzzes him in and the count goes full. A couple of borderline pitches went his way and a jam in the second. This one opens the door for a full count pitch to the hottest Red Sox hitter. The seventh pitch to Hanley Ramirez. A broken bat flare into left field for a base hit. Morland set it home. Gonzalez throw. They got him at the plate. Marwin Gonzalez cuts down Mitch Moreland and keeps the Astros in front 2-1. So Chris Sale out of the Red Sox bullpen in a 2 1 game for the fourth inning. First time out of the bullpen since 2012, caught by you, AJ. Absolutely. And he was kind of a swing man because the White Sox, he, he was a closer for a while because the White Sox kind of didn't know what to do with him. They were afraid his arm couldn't hold up as a starter. He's proven them all wrong by going out there every year and doing what he's done. So this is not an unfamiliar place for Chris Sale. It was usually later in the game when he would come in. And I joked with him before the game, Coney, hey, you're back to your old days at close. And he's like, yeah, all I need you is back there catching me and be like old times. But Chris Sale can do this, and he wanted the ball today, and here we go. After that, game one of the division series and his postseason debut, when he gave up seven runs on nine hits over five plus. That strike one on Brian McCann. From your eyes, David, what was wrong in game one for him? Well, we talked to John Farrell about it, and you know it, it's pretty obvious you know he's got three really good pitches but his slider is his finish pitch and they were flat. I think that's something to look for right there as we see the first one there to McCann down and away but Chris Sales one of those guys almost like Randy Johnson for a left handed batter is very uncomfortable. And Two and one. And when he's right, it's like that ball is coming from the second baseman. Pitches from the third base side of the rubber and really throws extremely across his body. Slider catches the bottom of the zone, two and two. You talk about him throwing from the can you third base side of the rubber. Can you imagine as a left handed hitter if he threw from the first base side? It's harder to control the outside corner if he did that, but man, just eat it. Not that he doesn't it anyways. He strikes out McCann with 99 in the corner. Not that Chris Sale doesn't eat up left handed hitters anyways but if you move him over I know when he was with the White Sox he moved back and forth to find it but this is just 99 mile an hour paint to a left handed hitter and Brian McCann wants to stay in there but his body kind of gives it away the crossfire action of Chris Sale's delivery slightly closed and landing and then a little bit of a spin out. Top of the order George Springer looks at ball on low. Doubled in the first scored their first run and brought home their second run with a base hit in the second. Two balls no strikes. You know as a very proud starting pitcher too who got rocked in his first outing. Well you just cannot wait for redemption to get back out there so I can understand. 
what Chris Sale's feeling right now. And the same thing happened to you, right? You got rocked in your first postseason start, but they got you back out there for a relief appearance soon after. Yeah, and that was big, just to just to wash away that first outing. And Chris Sale's been waiting for this opportunity. Two and two on Springer. I know he told you, AJ, that, he, he, that nothing's hurt but his feelings. <laughs> That's right. And, and for those who don't know Chris Sale, he's one of the the, the best guys in, in all of baseball. And, yeah, he got rocked in game one, but he said everything feels great. People are talking about my arm. My arm feels great, but my feelings are a little hurt from giving up all those hits. Did Springer offer? Not quite. Full count. Chris Sale said the day before game one, he'd throw until his arm fell off. And they asked him if he'd come back on short rest for game four. Well, here he is, but in a different role than anybody envisioned. He's home with a 3 2. Go back to that game one, which was a nightmare for Sale on his debut for the postseason. But you're just used to seeing Chris Sale bury sliders. And when a left hander hangs in there on sliders, you know that it's flat. And then, of course, when you get cut off at the pass by Bregman there, instead of getting down and in with that slider, it ends up over the wall. Gets in on Springer here. Dustin Pedroia with the rain picking up some, has it for out number two. That's something that you can tweak between outings in this short a time. You know, it's something at this point in the season that you have to recognize that you need to make sure if you're going to miss, it's going to be way in off the plate. You know, your normal snapdragon that you throw during the first half of the season isn't there. You know, the, by snapdragon, I mean the tight spin that you get. You just know you can get out there and snap, and it's going to go where you want to. And his first start, that just wasn't getting there. Josh Reddick, strike one. So how do you compensate for a little bit of a tired arm? That's very difficult to do, but. It's almost willpower. Maybe go to your changeup. Maybe go to your fastball more. Reddick gets it back to him. Chris Sale with a one, two, three, fourth inning. Trying to do his best David Price impression to help the Red Sox stay alive in October. Full day of baseball, postseason baseball. No better time of year. Nationals and Cubs day baseball at Wrigley on TBS. 6.30 tonight on FS1. The Indians will try and finish off the Yankees with Trevor Bauer and Luis Severino coming back for his first outing since the disaster in the wild card game. Dodgers going for the sweep in Phoenix at 10 o'clock on TBS to wrap up the day. 2-1 here in Boston and Rafael Devers chops the first pitch from Charlie Morton foul. Joe Davis, David Cohen, A.J. Pruszynski, J.P. Morosi. We're now at 2.53 local time. And the crew chief, Ted Barrett, talked about right around 3.15 being when the heaviest rain is supposed to arrive. I think so far they'd call the plan a success and that they've gotten three-plus innings in. They came into it thinking that they'd get a chunk of the game in and then have to wait some. There is kind of a planned delay in this. And that delay could be long. I mean, we could finish this game under the lights conceivably. Yeah, and the Chris Sale card has already been played. As he is now in this game, and if there's a heavy rain delay coming, it'd be hard to envision him coming back after a, maybe an, an hour or two or longer of a delay. Let's by the feet for a ball one and two. Uh, the 20 year old Devers. They call Carita which is Spanish for baby face. I don't have to tell you why. Still though so calm so fearless. I've loved what he's given them since his call up. It happened in late July two weeks after they finally cut ties with Pablo Sandoval. Plan wasn't to bring him up until September at the very earliest. They didn't figure that he was quite ready, even though he was hitting well in the minors. 
And he proved right away that he was ready to hit as a major leaguer. Eight home runs in his first 20 games. On a 2 2 from Morton. He strikes out on a pitch that was down and in. Say one thing about Charlie Morton. He can make some pitches when he has to. And that is textbook back leg slider action on a left handed batter and works perfectly. Christian Vasquez, even with Chris Sale in the game, normally getting caught by Sandy Leone, they stick with Vasquez. He drew a walk his first time, and here takes a strike. Well, you're not switching catchers in the middle of the game, Joe. So Christian Vasquez, who hasn't caught Chris Sale a whole lot, better buckle up and figure out a way to get him through some innings for the Red Sox and keep him in this game, down only down by one. Astros a little more flexibility with the catching situation and that they chose to carry a third among their 25 just two for Boston. It's one ball one strike. I mentioned the injury issues Morton's gone through in his career. He's had surgery on both hips. He's had an elbow surgery. Last year was cut short with a torn hamstring that he had operated. One and two. And healthy this season and a career high 14 wins for the 33 year old. Really strong finish. To earn this postseason start. First year of a two year contract that he signed with Houston this offseason. Morton's one two. Good at bat here by Christian Vasquez. So far not the results but fouling off some tough pitches. Charlie Morton keeps making pitches like you said Coney when he's needed to he's made them. And he continues to make these pitches and Vasquez keeps fouling some good pitches off. Ground screw on standby. Arena's has picked up some. Vasquez down on strikes, and that's back to back K's for Charlie Morton to open the fourth. Well, this rain sure is making for an odd environment for an elimination game, isn't it? The crowd see, seems a little subdued for Fenway. With everything on the line here, I don't know if it's the rain or the way Charlie Morton's pitched or the dreariness in the, in the, in the sky and in the air, but normally Fenway's rocking in an elimination game. They're only down one. It feels more like they're down four or five at this point. He's still rocking. Well, this game feels like a tease at this point with all the base runners really on both sides and a two to one game, not your typical two to one Fenway game. The Red Sox have gone one for five with men in scoring position. Astros have gone one for seven. The lone hit Boston had with runners in scoring position failed to produce a run with the outfield assists from Marwin Gonzalez. It's ball one on Jackie Bradley. The only run for Boston came in a Bogarts home run in the first. One and one. Jackie Bradley continues to take that four seam fastball inside on the inner half. It's not even really an inner third, it's inner half, and he just 
refuses to pull the trigger on that pitch. Pulls the trigger there, but he yanks it foul. Even with Pesky's pole looming down there, that thing was hooked. Well, the thing about that pitch is that's set up by the fastballs in his first at bat, and then the last pitch that's a fastball in. Morton then throws his breaking ball off of it. Jackie Bradley recognizes it as in, and he pulls the trigger too quick, and he pulls it foul. That's how one pitch sets up another. One pitch sets up, one pitch leads to the next pitch. The one two got him swinging and Morton strikes out the side in the fourth Astros in front 2 one to the fifth inning of game four. The ALDS on FS1 is presented by Doosan official partner of Major League Baseball and is sponsored by Taco Bell. Sometimes you got to live much. And home runs mean more this postseason as T-Mobile is guaranteeing at least $1 million for hurricane recovery efforts. With every home run hit worth $10,000. Help break $1 million by tweeting hashtag HR4HR. And T-Mobile will donate an additional $1 per tweet. 2-1 game to the fifth inning. Chris Sale after a 1-2-3-4 delivers to Jose Altuve. Strike one. The rain has continued to fall moments ago between innings the umpiring crew the member of the grounds crew going over the radar and seeing what's coming remnants of tropical storm Nate here in the northeast a ball and a strike on Altuve now that is extra important the weather right now because of Chris sales status you'd hate to have the weather limit what you can get out of him in this elimination game. A real big gamble by the Red Sox and having sale in this game on short rest with rain. Altuve lays down a bunt, a wet ball that Devers throws on a bullseye. It's been an adventure for him defensively since his call up. That there is impressive. That's a nice play on this wet field. Altuve has been stinging every ball so he tries to trick him a little bit but Devers on a dead sprint perfect throw and a perfect play. And a great try by Altuve with his speed. Trying to put a little pressure on sale and get him in the stretch position with the leadoff runner on base. Just a little too hard. On the bunt. The pitch made it a little too hard because it was kind of coming in on him, so it surprised him. And instead of missing the barrel, he barreled it. Carlos Correa takes a ball. Which shouldn't be a surprise because Jose Altuve's barreled every other ball in this series, so even barreling bunts now. <laughs> Not a bad idea, though. Devers having struggled over there. And with the wet conditions. Ball on a strike. Sales looked really good through four batters, four plus. Looking for redemption. So far, so good. Blows it by him at 95, one and two. In a different role from David Price. David Price protecting a one run lead yesterday. Sales team down by one run, trying to keep it right there. Goal is the same, and that both guys are trying to extend Boston season on a one-two pitch. It's in the dirt, and the count evens up. Astros took the first two games of this series in Houston, both 8-2. Boston responding with a 10-3 win yesterday. And trying to force a decisive game five back in Texas on Wednesday. The 2-2 pitch. My sales delivery just gets me, AJ, when I watch him out. <laughs> how he, you know, so extreme third base side of the rubber. I know we showed this before and that that crossfire action. I'm sure I heard this somewhere before in reference to a golf swing, but he looks like an, an octopus falling out of a tree. <laughs> how about this development? And the Astros bullpen, Justin Verlander. Welcome to 2017 in October. 
man how the times have changed you used to want a starter to go as long as you can as a starter now teams can't wait to get to the bullpen and use starters there. Coney could he be getting work or could he be actually getting ready. Hard to say with you know with A.J. Hinch he's a bit of a gambler down there he might want to just match up. And he's got the one run lead. So different than yesterday with Price and Farrell having the one run lead. Justin Verlander zero relief appearances though. Is this the time you want to break you want to play this wild card. The Red Sox have showed their hand with Chris Sale. Justin Verlander welcome to the postseason go go get him out of the bullpen. It's a gamble. Let's check in with JP. Well Joe A.J. Hinch said just before the game began that both Justin Verlander and Dallas Keuchel are in fact available in the bullpen today although Verlander remains their scheduled starter for the if necessary game five. All right JP. Correa making sale work and staying alive here. It is from the Red Sox perspective when they looked at using Chris Sale it was well. Game five doesn't happen if you don't get there. Well from the Astros perspective you don't have to worry about using Verlander in game five if you don't allow it to get there. Yeah it's really going for the juggler it's A.J. Hinch if he makes this move. On the ninth pitch he goes through the back door for strike three. And he's retired all five that he's faced out of the Boston bullpen. When you throw a backdoor slider from that angle it looks like it's coming out of the dugout as Correa just gives up on it and right to the glove. And there's no way that's going to get to the outside corner when you see it coming from there and then all of a sudden it makes a turn. And he hit Christian Vasquez perfect right in his glove no movement. All Correa can do is kind of walk back throw his bat up in the air and tip your cat to Chris Sale tip your hat to Chris Sale because of the pitch. Although Correa looks like he's a little bit frustrated with the strike three call. Gonzalez has stolen around with his outfield assist now bats with the bases empty and two out and the Astros in front 2 1 here in the fifth inning. So you think A.J. Hinch wants to end this series right here in Boston. He doesn't want to go back to Houston going with Justin Verlander possibly Dallas Keuchel if it, if it came to that but he wants to end it right here. He wants to end the Red Sox season in Fenway today. That would be the sentiment and you know you're not going to bring Justin Verlander in just to to face a couple of hitters and, and maybe he could start again in game five. That's not going to happen. You've got Dallas Keiko now as the backup to start in game five. And Justin Verlander, if you've got him up and warming up, he's coming in this game. And an interesting dynamic between the two teams, the Red Sox and the Astros. The Red Sox really have Chris Sale, and then they weren't sure after that where the Astros have kind of two aces, Keiko and Verlander. Two and one. Everybody all series long when we came into the year the Red Sox had sale price Porcello this super rotation well the Astros by making the trade for Verlander kind of took stole that thunder from the Red Sox and they had the advantage in that they do have Keiko if Verlander comes in for game five. Gonzalez pops it up in short center Jackie Bradley. Six up, six down for Chris Sale with a rain coming and a 2 1 game. We are halfway home. Official caps, t shirts, hoodies, jackets, and more. You can celebrate your favorite team with the latest postseason gear at MLBShop.com. Bottom of the fifth inning of game four with the Astros in front, both in the game and in the series, 2 1. Top of the order for the Red Sox against Charlie Morton who stays in and delivers a strike to Dustin Pedroia. Now the fascinating thing watching Justin Verlander warm the more you think about it is the same thing we're talking about with Chris Sale with the rain coming. Boy it's a risk and that he could go out there maybe say pitch in any and then have a few hour delay. Tap to third Bregman's got it running throw for the first out and in that case you've burnt your quote unquote secret weapon. It's a great point Joe and, and the reason you see both Harris and Verlander warming up is 
A.J. Hinch will only really wants to bring Verlander in to start an inning with a clean inning. And if Morton gets in trouble here with men on base, he'll probably bring Harris in to get out of that jam so that Verlander can be comfortable with enough warm-up time to start an inning. Well, the way Justin Verlander is warming up, he sure looks like he's coming in this game because he's letting it go. There's no, there's no, hey, I'm getting work in. He's... He's letting it rip down there. Yeah, he doesn't have that look in his eye either that he'd have when he's just getting work in on a side day. Xander Bogarts drove in the only Boston run with his solo homer in the first off Morton. What a fascinating evolution we seem to be watching in postseason baseball with the way that these bullpens and really these staffs are managed. More than half of the innings thrown this October have been from the bullpen. It's the first time that's ever been the case. Yeah, we're definitely seeing a you know a, a changing of ideology, you know, ideological preferences in terms of traditional roles for relievers, starters, emergence of a bullpen ace or super reliever, so to speak. Remember when it was going into a playoff series? Who has better starters? That was usually who determined what determined who won the series. Now it's who can manage their bullpen and keep guy enough arms healthy to, to get through the series. With the off days built in, I get it, but man, it just seems like they're quicker and quicker to go to these bullpen arms, whether they're a starter or a reliever out there. And so is it fair to say that the job of an in-game manager has become more important? In the last year or so absolutely you know conventional wisdom has been challenged even over the last couple of years three and one on Bogarts you know we saw a great manager in Buck Showalter get criticized last year for, for leaving his closers Zach Britton in the bullpen without pitching him in the in the game that they eventually lost that ended their season we've seen Joe Girardi have Roldis Chapman warming up in the sixth or seventh inning recently A 3 1. And remember, John Farrell's been thrown out of this game. Gary D. Sarcina, the bench coach for Farrell, the acting manager in this spot. It's almost as if the lines are getting blurred and pitchers are just pitchers. There's no more roles. Everyone used to want to roll, like I'm the ninth inning guy, I'm the eighth inning guy. Well, guess what? Now you might be the eighth and ninth inning guy. You might be the sixth and seventh inning guy. It's, it's just become, like you said, blurred. Bogarts lays off ball four. AJ Hinch coming out. See if he goes to Harris or Verlander. Like you said, probably going to want a clean inning for Justin Verlander. Nope. He's going to bring him right into the fire for his first career relief appearance. Trying to hang on to a 2 1 lead and send the Astros to the American League Championship Series. Justin Verlander was the face of the Tigers organization with a dozen seasons there. Won an MVP and a Cy Young in 2011, and then at the last minute approved the trade to the Astros, really at the last second. And how good has he been since that deal leading the Astros through the month of September helping them get back on track after the rocky August dominated in game one two runs over six innings and you put it all together and how about that line Coney since he put on an Astros uniform just what the doctors or doctor ordered I mean, Houston was waiting for this even past the original trade deadline this this trade came in at the end of August where Verlander had to clear waivers. Comes into a 2-1 game with the Astros leading. One win from advance into the American League Championship Series, and he's in for the heart of the order with a tying run at first. So and one on Andrew Benintendi. And count me in as one of the guys that didn't think he would go to Houston. I thought LA or Chicago or New York or wherever, wherever else, everyone was courting him. So, but I didn't think he'd come to Houston. He's here and he's been, man, he's been impressive since he's put on the Astros uni. One ball and one strike and those destinations you mentioned those were the ones that everybody kind of figured would be the most likely ones that he would approve because he had a full no trade. And then at 1030 an hour and a half before the deadline. 
This is after back-to-back -back bad starts for McHugh and for Keuchel. Jeff Luno, the general manager of the Astros, said, okay, enough. I've got to do something. Picked up the phone and called out Avila of the Tigers to see what it take. They get Verlander to Houston. They agreed on a list of prospects within 45 minutes. That left Justin Verlander 45 minutes to decide whether or not to approve the deal. And knowing Detroit was entering a rebuild, knowing that Houston was headed to the postseason, and with the pieces to be there for years to come, he agreed to waive his no right or his no trade rights seconds before the clock struck midnight. Benintendi fouls it back one and two. Not sure if that first call to him involved this. Hey, might need you out of the bullpen trying to pitch us into the ALCS. It's a huge difference. You, when you're a starter, you have all the time to warm up. You can you can long toss. You can get your sprints in. In the bullpen, a lot of times they gave Verlant Justin plenty of time to get ready. But a lot of times, it's how fast can you get ready? And that's that's the difference. That the blood gets flowing differently. It's just a different role and a different mindset. Two and two. Interesting shot at Dave Dombrowski, the GM of the Red Sox, formerly the GM of the Tigers. Who, this was his guy for years. Used to be with him. Now he's trying to beat you. Deep down, there's got to be a little smile, though, Dave. I drafted him. I developed him. I got him to become what he is. And, man, we got to face him. Ben Intendi hits a towering fly ball towards the pole. It is gone. First batter that Justin Verlander faces. The 23 year old rookie Andrew Benintendi crushes a go ahead two run home run. Bets now to shore. There's Correa for the second out. All fastballs up to this point, AJ, and then the first breaking ball. A little cut slide piece inside. Benintendi so quick. Not only gets to it, but keeps it fair. As this, this cutter's trying to get inside and doesn't get there. And Benintendi beats him to the spot. That was a straight cement mixer. See how the ball just spun? Looks like a cement mixer truck. That was a cement mixer slider from Justin Verlander. And you, you never can say, it's always easy to second guess up here, but Charlie Morton was pitching pretty well. And I know you got all the toys in the toy box and you got Justin Verlander for his first ever relief appearance. But wow. I'm in shock. And now they serenade Verlander here at Fenway. Mitch Moreland. Well, if A.J. Hinch wanted to keep the crowd out of it, by bringing in Justin Verlander, he put him right back in it. Granted, he gave up a home run, but this Fenway faithful, they're into it now. Strike one.
two balls two strikes on Mitch Moreland the Astros led this game one nothing after a half inning Boston quickly tied it in the bottom half the Astros answered back with a run in the second to lead it 2 one that was against Rick Porcello Chris sales come in and retired all six that he's faced A.J. Hinch perhaps going to Justin Verlander a touch too soon with Charlie Morton still cruising along with a 2 1 lead and he's greeted rudely by a two run home run from Andrew Benintendi. This is the matchup we thought if we got to a game five we see sale versus Verlander just came in the fifth inning today so surprise yeah. to a lot of people. These folks that came to the game came here to game four kind of getting a game five ticket for the price of a game four ticket with Verlander and Sale facing off in the middle innings. You have to go back to 1986 and the Red Sox and Mets with the Daryl Strawberry chance. The Daryl chance now turning into Justin chance. Moreland walks. And those chants aren't about to stop. Good swing by Ben Attendi right there. Great swing. Nice back lift. Got the hair going. The fans see it. Wishing it to keep going. What a reaction. Think these guys want to go home, Coney? Red Sox aren't ready to go home. The fans aren't ready to go home. And maybe it's just that it's gotten significantly louder but I feel like there are more people here now too and maybe some folks in the bars and restaurants in the area waiting it out to see if the rain would stay away if it clear up at all and thinking hey we better get in there this is getting good one on two out Hanley Ramirez. Strike one. Can't keep that helmet on, can he? When you swing out of your shoes, <laughs> your helmet tends to fly off. He is six for six in the two games here at Fenway. That is turning it loose. A very confident swing from Ramirez going right now. A pop fly the fans started to see the ball with their hearts as it's caught in center by Springer. What a moment here at Fenway Park. Justin Verlander comes on to try and slam the door on the Red Sox season. Andrew Benintendi kicks it open with a go ahead two run homer and the Red Sox lead three two after five. Back at Fenway Park. Red Sox have taken their first lead of the game on an Andrew Benintendi home run. It's 3 2. And Chris Sale back to work against Alex Bregman, who pops it up on the first pitch to Jackie Bradley in center. At seven up and seven down to Chris Sale out of the Boston bullpen. And it's gone much better thus far for Boston's ace coming out of the pen than it has for Houston's. Well, it's still early, but that's a huge out for Chris Sale after his team comes out. Gets the two run home run Verlander Ben attendee and then gets a first pitch out not only because of the momentum factor but also a pitch count factor like first pitch outs he wants quick outs so he can keep going and going and going and get the ball to Craig Kimbrell as fast as possible. Yuli Gurriel inside ball one. Gurriel quietly is having himself quite a series. Six consecutive hits. Billy Hatcher, the last guy to have hits in seven consecutive plate appearances. I asked where the fastballs in are to Guriel. Chris Sale is going to challenge him in. I promise you that. We saw that the first two pitches here. And he drags it by Devers. That gets all the way to the corner, and Guriel's at second. 
Tying run in scoring position with an Olay down there at third from Devers. Mentioned it earlier when he made the nice play on the bunt. It's been an adventure defensively for him. It certainly was, and he got it in there. I mean, Gurriel kind of cut him off, but I don't think that was all that well struck. As you see, Devers eventually thought he was going to get in front of it, and at the last minute tries to turn the glove over. So, questionable decision making on Devers there is that, you know, he got caught in between. Well, I guarantee if you ask him, and Brian Butterfield is a great infield instructor, third base coach for the Red Sox. If he takes one more half step to his right, that's a routine ground ball, but instead of not moving his feet, not being there, he kind of gets caught in between, like you said, and tries to backhand at the last second and puts a runner in scoring position for the Astros. It's a two base error. Evan Gaddis now with a chance to tie this game with a base hit. A fastball for a strike. Hey guys, 315 is coming past and it's as dry as it's been all day. What do you got, JP? <laughs> Weather update here at the bottom of the hour, Joe, and it has stopped raining down here. The forecast changing a bit, and now MLB increasingly confident this game will be played continuously. So very good news. That's foul. It's very good news. And you know what it is? Credit goes to Major League Baseball and to these managers for the way that they've executed this because this is not an easy thing to make decisions on. Now we've seen it go the other way where you, you end up waiting with a tarp on the field uh, for it to rain and then the rain doesn't come and so it gets really frustrating. No balls two strikes on Evan Gaddis. For Vasquez and he stays alive. Should also be noted, Joe, that Major League Baseball, I mean, it's tough to accommodate everybody. I mean, the start time of this game in particular, waiting on the outcome of the Yankee game last night, is it going to be a day game or a night game? Very difficult with your you've got multiple games going on, trying to decide, and then the fans here in Boston put in a tough spot, not knowing what time the game would be today until almost midnight last night. What about the players? What about us bro poor broadcasters at one or seven? The, the players, I understand the fans and everyone, but the players, it, it's a different mindset whether the game's at one or seven. At least it was for me when, when, when I had that because it changes your sleep. Strike three call. Much better slider than we saw in game one as you see this one's a little quicker even though it gets a lot of the plate. It seemed to have a little more late break to it a little more snap to it. Like Gaddis was looking for something else. That's the third strikeout for Chris Sale. And his two and two thirds work. The only base runner came in the air from Devers. Chris Sale looks pretty darn comfortable in this relief roll. He looks like he's done this a couple times before as we mentioned earlier that he's and I talked to him before the game like I said and he couldn't wait. He wanted this job and he wanted this opportunity. It's up to Brian McCann. Two gone in a one run game. He watches his slider bite into the zone and it looks a whole lot better Coney than it did in game one. Yeah that one buckled McCann breaking over the inside corner. It has to give the, the Red Sox pitchers a confidence a, a, a competition whatever you want to call it when Brian uh, David Price goes out there and does what he did yesterday man we, we got to follow suit. Oh one. Strike two. Pitch number 41 from Chris Sale about to be delivered. Three scoreless relief innings from Chris Sale. Welcome back to the ALDS on FS1 presented by Nusan. 
at Fenway Park. Game four of this American League Division Series. The Astros with a 2-1 series advantage, but on an Andrew Benintendi home run, the Red Sox lead this one 3-2. We've got more baseball coming up for you on TBS the Nationals and the Cubs but game three of that series tied at one here on FS1 tonight at 630 Indians and Yankees Corey Kluber tries to pitch the Indians to the championship series and the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks finish off the day at 10 Eastern on TBS Justin Verlander on in relief it's strike one on Rafael Devers who we flummoxed in game one of this series Verlander was brought on with one on last inning for Andrew Benintendi with Charlie Morton pitching really well having allowed just one run but Benintendi homers inside the right field foul pole to give Boston the lead one ball one strike now John Lester in the famous game seven of the World Series last year was brought in mid inning and we know what he did working through the middle part of that game. Is it an overrated concept that starters aren't comfortable doing that? Do we put too much into it? Well, I think obviously the fact that Will Harris was warming up right next to Verlander it created kind of the option for A.J. Hinch to go either way. I was surprised. I thought that was the purpose of having Will Harris warm up to get out of the inning and have Verlander start with a clean inning considering the fact he's never relieved before especially how much A.J. Hinch said he likes Will Harris against left handed hitters and Ben attendee was a left handed hitter so even when he came out to change pitchers we didn't know who was coming in until we saw Verlander trot in full count oh, the beauty of baseball right second guessing it's been around forever you know should have brought in this guy. Why'd you bring in this guy? Over managing, under managing. It's low, leadoff walk for Devers. So it makes this game great, Tony. You can always you can sit up here in the press box, sit in the stands. Heck, even when you played, you sat there and you questioned your manager. Why is the manager doing this on the planes and on the buses? Why, why, why did we make this move? Why do we do this. Oh, I would have done this but it's easy to do that. But until you have those shoes on as manager and you have that nameplate it's a whole different ball game. Runner at first nobody out for Vasquez. You know yesterday it was Rafael Devers that hit the go ahead home run. That was against Francisco Liriano first batter that he faced he was brought in for Devers same situation here. Vasquez swinging away strike one. Verlander brought on for Benintendi and he serves a home run against Justin. Well it's interesting that Liriano wasn't up to face the lefty after giving up the homers to Devers yesterday who's yeah. kind of a lefty specialist throughout his career when he wasn't starting so kind of shows you where A.J. Hinch is with him at this point. Astros. Down 3 2 in this game. Getting ahead of Vasquez 0 and 2 here. The Red Sox selecting not to sacrifice with some insurance at first and nobody out. The nine hitter Bradley on deck. He was struck out twice today, perhaps part of the equation. A pop up into shallow center. Springer for the first out. Bradley struck out twice today. Both of those against more. One of them came with the bases loaded in the second inning and nobody out. The Red Sox would not score in that inning. Goes after the first pitch here. It's 0 1.
One and one. Knife to short. Bregman's got it, who is actually playing at short. The third baseman starts the double play. Home runs mean more this postseason as T Mobile is guaranteeing at least $1 million for hurricane recovery efforts. With every home run hit worth ten thousand dollars you can help break one million dollars by tweeting hashtag HR 4 HR and T-Mobile donate an additional dollar per tweet. On a rainy day here in Boston been able to play uninterrupted somehow. And that's good news for the Red Sox because they've been able to ride Chris Sale who's delivered three scoreless innings. The only base runner against him came on an air. He struck out four. And now gets the top of the Astros order. And my oh my how things have changed for, for the Red Sox here with the sale out there. Originally they said hey if we can get to the sixth. And hand it to Reed and Kimbrell for, for nine outs and three innings. Well the way Chris Hill is throwing. There's nobody warming. It looks like this might be his game to get it to, straight to Kimbrell. Exactly. The way he's looking if he stays. As good as he's been. And I mean Kimbrell available for two full innings. They might not even need that. He's at 44 pitches right now. And this is only one day short of a full trip through the rotation rest for sale. So it's not like this is him coming back super quick. Stringer takes in the dirt. Absolutely. There was talk of him starting this game anyways on short rest. So this is not that big of a deal for him. To throw this many pitches and, and to be this have this many innings under his belt but. Interesting if the Red Sox do hold on to this game we go to game five. Talk about redemption for two guys sale bad start in game one his first postseason and David Price redemption for the whole season and what they've done amazing. Springer starts the inning with a base hit to laugh. Third hit of the day for George Springer and the Astros have the tying run aboard to open the seventh. First couple of innings in this series A.J. Hinch's team has jumped out to some huge leads yesterday they had the three nothing lead after a half inning but that was it. And got the early runs in this one too, one in the first and one in the second but shut down since. Josh Reddick. Strike one. Well, Chris Sale's about to earn this outing right now because he's going through the heart. With Reddick, Altuve, Correa, guys that have been swinging the bat really well all series. So if he's going to get them and get the Red Sox to a game five, key inning right here, key batters, starting with Reddick. Reddick stabs a bunt at it. We've seen him do that a couple times today unsuccessfully. And now in an 0 2 hole. Best offense in baseball all year. An historically good offense by certain measures. Right now, looking for one measly run to tie this game. A tie, and it's one and two. Red Sox three, Astros two. Top of the seventh inning. Part of the Houston order coming up against Sale. One, two. Reddick able to lay off. No 
Jose Altuve having this MVP caliber season. Josh Reddick number two in the majors behind Altuve and hitting over the last few months. A pop fly that'll slice its way away from Bogarts, the lone man on the left side, and it's been intended to call him off and make the catch. You held your breath there for a moment if you're a Red Sox fan. Almost looked like Reddick was just trying to do anything he could to hit the ball the other way against the shift as it was open down the line but got under it. Still a long way to cover for both guys. And Ben Dittany takes charge at the last minute. Uh oh, be careful doing that, Josh. <laughs> There's been some guys known to have concussions by hitting themselves in the head with their bat. So be careful. If you do that, you got to know how to do it. But just frustration. Like you said, he was trying to go to left field, trying to go the other way, even tried to bunt. He got it to left field. He just tried to force it too much over there. So Altuve with one on and one out in a one run game. Strike one. He took Chris Sale deep in the first inning of game one. He grounded out to third against Sale here in game four. The difference between Sale's slider today and his first start is night and night and day. Much more depth, much quicker break to a slider today. And do you think it's that has to do with his the adrenaline, or do you think it has to do with the fact that hey, I'm coming out of the bullpen, I just go as hard as I can instead of trying to space it out a little bit, like and, and just getting that whip, like you're talking about, getting it out front, finishing it. I think it's a, a byproduct of coming out of the bullpen and not having to save bullets. Sometimes it is a mindset. Yes, and it's just a it, it can be as, as simple as confidence as letting it go. You saw Addison Reed warming in case of Chris Hill runs into any more trouble here in the seventh. A one one Altuve fouls it off strike two. John Farrell said he thought he could get three innings combined between Reed and Kimbrell if he needed to. John Farrell's been thrown out if you happen to just be joining us. Gary Bissar seen to the bench coach making the decisions as the acting manager. The one two from Sale to Altuve. Altuve the second out of the seven. Another sharp breaking slider designed to be back door and it races over to the inside part of the plate. Now Tuve doesn't like it. But it just splits the plate by the time it ends up off the plate in. Sweeping break to that pitch just filthy. Guys a hitter. You want that pitch Coney as a pitcher but as a hitter you see the way the catcher catches it and you don't see it cross the plate because you're looking it back and you give up on it but you see the way the catcher catches this you're like there's no way that's a strike and then you go back and look at the replay and you're like okay my bad not out of the woods yet here's Carlos Correa for the five strikeouts to your guys point have been looking Astros just give it up on that slider. Reed ready to go. Will he even be needed? A strike on Correa. For me, Chris Sale, this is Chris Sale's inning. Unless something crazy happens, Chris Sale's finishing this inning. 
And then if you're Gary DiSarcino or John Farrell, who's not managing, allegedly. Technically. Allegedly. Yeah. Then you worry for the next inning. If he gets out of this inning, do you want Addison Reed to start the eighth, or do you run with Chris Sale? Here comes the 0 1. Slider just misses. One ball, one strike. Strike two. One day after David Price throws score four scoreless innings out of the bullpen. Chris Sale on the brink of doing the same. Sent to left field for Correa. And so he and Springer have finally cracked the code against Chris Sale. The Astros at first and second with two out. Carl Willis, the pitching coach. This is just a breather meeting here, Coney. This is, hey, let's, I know it's a big moment. You've thrown three and two thirds for us, big fella. You're our horse. Take a deep breath and let's get Marwin Gonzalez out and keep this lead. There's, there's, there's not a lot of strategy being, how do you feel? And let's give you a break and get this guy out for us. And there is Reed who is ready to go. Red Sox open. They don't need to see Reed, at least in this inning. Perhaps not even this afternoon with Craig Kimbrell available to throw two full innings if they decide to go that route. Well the base hit that Correa got was off a 99 mile an hour fastball so Chris Dale, Chris Dale still has plenty of stuff. Facing the man that drove in more runs than any other Astro this year Marwin Gonzalez. Started him with a slider that catches the corner strike one. Give Mark Wagner credit the home plate umpire he's called that pitch consistently on both sides. John Farrell got thrown out on similar type pitches. But the Red Sox are now the benefactor of the same calls. And Mark Wagner's done a good job he's. He's made some calls he's been consistent. People haven't agreed with him all the time but he's also let guys stay in the game at times when they've argued. Nice stop by Vasquez, who is not overly familiar with catching Chris Sale. Mostly Sandy Leon during the regular season. Now Vasquez, the starter in this game, because Rick Porcello, a long time ago, is the starting pitcher. Astros have not been without opportunities. One for nine with runners in scoring position today. The difference has been the long ball, the oddity. Boston's hit them. Sale again a strike away. You think Chris Sale has these right handed hitters for Houston to wear inside? That ball is six inches off the plate in and Marwin Gonzalez 
cheating to get to it, which opens up that back foot slider that Chris Sale is so known for. Look at this ball. This ball is way in off the plate. Marwin Gonzalez is just cheating because he knows Chris Sale is established in on all of these right handed hitters. Now I look for either slider, back foot, or maybe an elevated fastball. Coney, where are you going here? Well, he could go anywhere he wants. He also opened up the outside corner with a back door slider. So all sorts of options to Chris Sale now after inducing that type of swing. His one two. He struck him out. Back for the bottom of the seventh. Glad you're with us. What a game this has been. Dustin Pedroia takes strike one from Justin Verlander. Yes, we have Justin Verlander against Chris Sale for the second time in this series. Neither one of these guys started this game, though. Chris Sale, four scoreless innings out of the Boston pen. Justin Verlander gets Pedroia to bounce to Correa for the first out of the inning. That's now two innings for Verlander, who has allowed the two run home run to Benintendi. But how about Chris Sale who in game one just didn't have it. Yeah the difference in the quality of sliders thrown from this particular game as you see Bregman takes advantage flat and no real late break to it but today a different story on the back door quick right to the corner or around and then the ones end. That's the big difference and ones to the right handers in that one just raced across the plate and then down and in with late breaking action swings and misses. Instead of barrels found. Now Bogarts. That's ruled to have missed a little bit high for a ball. And so Chris Hill goes the four innings, gets out of a couple of jams. Yeah, keeps the Astros off of the board. Both those hits came in his final inning of work. Ball on a strike on Bogarts. Well, he doesn't look done yet. There's nobody up in the no, that's true. Red Sox last pen, so don't, work. Don't, don't count him out done yet because unless something changes and they get Addison Reed or Craig Kimbrell up in a hurry, we're going to see Chris Sale back out there for possibly a fifth inning. Guess we should have learned that yesterday. We were talking about David Price probably going just two innings, wound up going four. Told John Farrell he could go 80 pitches if he needed to yesterday. Off the end of the bat to Springer in center. David Price's four innings yesterday. It was the last time that a pitcher had thrown four or more scoreless relief innings in an elimination game since Madison Bumgarner's performance in Game 7 of the World Series in 2014. And it was the first time that a Red Sox pitcher had done it. Since 1999 when Pedro Martinez finished off the American League Division Series with six scoreless relief innings to complete a come from behind win in that series Red Sox had trailed two games to none as they did in this series came back to beat the Indians in five. Ben Intendi, the hero for now from an offensive standpoint with all that stuff about David Price and Chris Sale pitching so far four innings. Who starts game five for the Red Sox David Price a possibility. Wow. If they hold on here is David Price a real possibility. One ball one strike Pomerantz obviously is the, the obvious choice but that guy right there David Price. Could he come back and give him some innings give him some life. Well, wouldn't put it past him obviously Drew Pomerantz is. The most rested starter available for a potential game five. That would be Wednesday night or afternoon depending on what happens with the Yankees and the Indians tonight if they have a fifth game as well. And again there's still a couple innings to go in this one game five's no guarantee. But you start thinking in that direction with the Red Sox six outs away from forcing it. Pretty obvious what it would line up as for the Astros Dallas Keuchel would be that guy and you know they'd feel great about it. Two and two. Pretty nice luxury for the Astros to have Keiko, Cy Young Award winner, Justin Verlander, 
Cy Young Award winner and MVP. That's it's a pretty nice toys for A.J. Hinch to, to have at his disposal. Oh, a 2-2, and Benintendi strokes it foul. We go back to his home run in the fifth inning. Statcast powered by Amazon Web Services on this dramatic moment that greets Verlander into this game. A 90 mile per hour exit velocity, Cody. That's five miles per hour below what is considered hard hit. It really is, and you know it's a humid day here, so the ball is carrying. We had a little wind before with the weather coming through. So clearly the ball carrying the right field a little better today than yesterday. Hit in the right part of the park too. I think Josh Reddick wishes we had this weather yesterday when he hit the ball to Mookie Betts caught. Very similar numbers to what Josh Reddick had yesterday. A full count on Benintendi. Got his hands in, stayed alive. Drew Benintendi, generally from Cincinnati. Same beautiful left handed swing that he's had since he started playing baseball when he was five. Learned it in his backyard from his dad, hit tennis balls. Another 3 2 from Justin Verlander. Another fly ball down the right field line. Reddick near the pole, but with room this time. And the side is retired through his seven innings in a one run game. Game four, the ALDS. The ALDS presented by Doosan and FS1 is sponsored by Hankook Tire. Chase down your passion, never halfway. Now by T-Mobile, this postseason, there's a new leader in network. T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. And by Jameson Caskmates, Jameson Whiskey finished in Kraft Stout barrels. He stays in after four shutout relief innings. Chris Sale keeps on working. The slimmest of margins facing Alex Bregman, who takes outside ball one. Bregman homered against him in the first inning of game one. Chris Sale's 67th pitch of this outing on short rest. One ball, one strike as he goes to the changeup. And Craig Kimbrell loosens in the Boston bullpen. Ball two. Look at Bregman shaking his head. Boy, is that a confident kid or what? Good pickup, Joe. Yes, he is. And A.J. Hinch has noted that. High fly ball towards the monster. Alex Bregman has tied this game. He capitalizes on that confidence and evens the issue at three in the eighth. Now it's Guriel looking at a slider for a strike. So Bregman gets sale again. Rolled the short. There's Bogarts. One out. Stunned Fenway crowd sees this a changeup. We just made him swing and miss at. Had thrown a lot today, and Bregman knew it right away. And we talked about his confidence and how he felt. He proves AJ Hinch right again. Yeah. 
knows where the camera is too. Well, that's all part of being the part of the younger generation. Know where the camera is and get to his Twitter account. Gaddis cracks his bat. That's a fair ball. And it's played by the ball girl down the left field line. On the way to second is Gaddis at his own risk. He's safe. And it's up to the umpire to decide where he belongs with that ball interfered with. They will put him, it appears, back at first. So it becomes a dead ball as soon as it's played down there. And then umpire's discretion. Very difficult call. You got to go, is it right over the bag? Boy, that's a tough call. And that is reviewable. If that went over the bag, boy, it went over by a splinter. Well, it bounced on the line in front of the base. So it, and it was going foul. Thinking of splinters, Evan Gaddis is bad as splinters after that swing. But man, I, wow, what a tough call. And, Feel bad for the poor ball girl. Well, they shouldn't be booing her because she saved them a base. You know, she saved the Red Sox a base if they're going to put him at first. Well, I don't see any way you can overturn that call. I mean, it was so close. There's nothing conclusive on those replays. Gaddis still has not left second. He will now because they're going to pinch run for him with Cameron Mabin. And they're now delivering the message to Mabin that he's got to go back to first base. So really. This saves them a base if you think that Gaddis is going to get second. The umpires apparently don't. I, I don't think he was going to get second if, if that ball, because Bogarts was already halfway there. Okay. Bogarts would have picked that ball up and thrown it. That's why they're putting him back at first. So the poor girl, she didn't change anything. She just made it more fun for us to talk about something. But she doesn't feel very good right now. She, we saw her give the my bad earlier. But uh, tough, tough spot to put, a, put the, the poor girl in. Yeah, her face matches the uniform now. Ball comes at you fast down there, right? I mean, you got a split second to react. So, Houston has the go ahead run on base. Sale stays in there. Now, 73 pitches deep with strike one to Brian McCann. I believe this will be Chris Sale's last hitter. With Springer on deck, he's had good swings off of him. You got, you got Craig Kimbrell down in the bullpen ready to go. A pitch count and everything involved and give up the tying home run, or adrenaline drop. This is, this is it. Just touching 99 to begin his outing. He's a 95 here, and he's outside one and one. Two and one. Kent Giles, Houston's closer, who, like Craig Kimbrell, would be available for two full innings today. Cameron Mabin was acquired from the Angels at the end of August. Pinch running. For Evan Gaddis representing the go ahead run in the eighth. Slider sweeps away and it's three and one on McCann. It's hard not to lose a little wind in your sails if you're, you know, no pun intended for Chris Sale after giving up that big home run on the one pitch you want back. There's always that one pitch for any pitcher out there. Well, if I could only have that one pitch back for. So far for Chris Sale, it's that change up to Bregman. And for Justin Verlander, it's that little cement mixer slider he threw to Benintendi. The proverbial, that one pitch. 3 1. McCann corks the liner to right, but it's caught by Betts. So two out, top of the order, and George Springer coming up. 
Carl Willis the pitching coach Gary DeSar seemed to the bench coach. They happen to just be tuning in now John Farrell's been thrown out of this game. That was very early on. In fact way back in the second inning. So it's up to DeSar Cena to make this change and he will. Four and two thirds from Chris Sale. Our Budweiser game summary and a 3 3 tie here in game four with the Astros in front, two games to one. Alex Bregman is homered against Chris Sale to tie the score up and necessitate Craig Kimbrell. And Cameron Maven in first base and two out for George Springer. What a year Craig Kimbrell has had. Starts this outing with a fastball outside 1 0. A one two three inning or at least a scoreless inning in game two that was in a ten or an eight two blowout with the Astros in front. You're trying to keep it tied. Now we're close two and up. George Springer today three hits. It's had a nice day. Really nice day at the leadoff spot for the Astros. Set the table early with the leadoff double in the game. Really good swings all day. And Kimbrell missing badly. This one allows the go ahead run to move into scoring position. First one was close, the next two nowhere in the vicinity of the zone. We talked about Charlie Morton. I did yanking the ball. This is the definition of a yank. Trying to go away, just holding on to it too long, and just yanking it completely across the batter's box. Usually you yank it from inside to outside. But Craig Kimple right there, a little quick, side to side action, yanking it all the way out, out of the reach of Christian Vasquez. Yeah, the arm gets out in front of the lower half, like a golfer and a snap hook into the woods on your on the tee box. Here's a 3 0. Springer green lighted, sprays it foul, strike one. Absolutely green lighted. You're facing a team's closer. You got the go ahead run in a clinching game in the playoffs on second base. You know he's throwing you a heater. You give him the green light, and good for A.J. Hinch. The 3 1. Ball four on Springer. So first and second with two out as Kimbrell walks George Springer and it gets Josh Reddick to the plate. Carl Willis out for a visit. You know, Craig Kimbrell last recorded more than three outs in early August. Last time he recorded more than four outs. It was in early May, so it's not that he's been used for more than any in a whole lot. Well, what Chris Sale did today, he didn't need to. Four and two thirds out of the bullpen and relief of Rick Porcello, limiting what they need from Kimbrell. We've talked about redemption on the Red Sox side. Well, Reddick yesterday just missed a home run, knocked a home run over for the Red Sox. Here's his chance of redemption for the Houston Astros, and this is bat off Craig Kimball. Maven at second and Springer at first. Both run well. Strike one. And all of the Boston outfielders, especially in center and right, can throw. Ben attendees a tick below the other two guys, but Bradley and Betts, they can throw. So if you're on second camp, Maven, you better get a big jump right here. And as we've seen in this series, the fact that the arm isn't quite as good and left doesn't matter here because you play so shallow with the presence of the monster behind you. 0 1, ball 1.
the former Boston Red Sox player Josh Reddick. Is ahead two and one. The Red Sox drafted Reddick out of a junior college in Georgia. Debuted in Boston in 2009. Traded him to Oakland. From Oakland to the Dodgers, where he really struggled down the stretch last year. And seemingly a perfect fit for the Astros. Go ahead, run it second. A 2 1 is dribbled foul, and it's 2 and 2. 90 mile an hour curveball, by the way. 90. With just down action from Craig Kimbrell. The 2 1 count, Reddick selling out for a fastball. He knows who's hitting behind him, Jose Altuve. And what a pitch. Good take there from Reddick. You're right, AJ. Kimbrell just had an unbelievable year. I mean, for a great pitcher and a great career that he has going, especially tough this year 126 strikeouts and only 69 innings. A lot of them against left handed batters with that breaking ball. With two outs, a full count, any ball to the outfield grass is going to put Houston in front here. They take off, and Reddick hits it foul. We'll do it again. Huge advantage for the Astros 3 2 right here with. The runners can get a head start. Especially in Fenway, if he gets a base hit to left field with the shallow as a left fielder, we already saw Marwin Gonzalez throw out a runner at the play, Mitch Moreland. So it gives them a huge advantage as base running. So it, pretty much any ball in the outfield is going to score Cam Maven at this point. And does Craig Kimball have the guts to throw a 3 2 breaking ball with Altuve on deck? Will he do it or will he continue to challenge Reddick? Challenged him again, and Reddick stayed alive despite 100 whizzing by him. There'll be no sign on this pitch. Christian Vasquez going out there to, to, to get it on the same page, and then Xander Bogart's coming in because he wants to know what pitch is coming so he can cheat a little bit one way or the other. It's a breaking ball, a cheat to the pull side, and if it's a fastball, it'll kind of stay more up the middle. So, a lot of strategy here on 3 2. Not taking any chances that a sign can be delivered. Astros one win from the championship series. Two gone in the eighth. 3 2. Reddick bounces one in the left for a base hit. Throw to third, not in time, and Josh Reddick has given Houston a 4 3 lead. With a two out, two strike base hit to left. Great, great at bat by Josh Reddick right here. Trying to come in. Leaks back over the plate and just takes where it was pitched, takes it to left field because the runners are running, because of the ball is to the left of Ben Attendee. No shot at throwing him out at home. Cam Maven's already around third, well before Ben Attendee gets the ball. Tries to throw the guy out at third, but too late, and the Astros are back in front. That the, run is charged to Chris Sale, Tony. The value of contact, right? The theme for the Astros. Put the ball in play. And just like that, they find themselves six outs away from finishing this series. Now looking for insurance with Jose Altuve. Strike one. And it goes back to Kimbrell coming in, walking the guy, the first guy he faces. Wild pitch, and then you walk Springer. Then Reddick puts that at bat on him and gets the hit. Altuve now hits a pop fly into center field for Jackie Bradley Jr. Alex Bregman 
ties it with a home run against Chris Sale. And then with two outs and the runners moving, Josh Reddick, an opposite field base hit to break the tie and put his Houston Astros on the brink of a trip to the American League Championship Series. Twice this season, Ken Giles has gone two full innings to get saves, and he's trying to do it here in game four, starting Mookie Betts with ball one. He's never allowed a run here. That included an outing in the final regular season series that A.J. Hinch said he thought was really important for Giles to have experienced because this is his first postseason. Kind of a postseason atmosphere, first couple of games of that series, a final week. He's falling behind a dangerous hitter in bats 2 0. Ken Giles throws 100 miles an hour, but man, he throws a lot of breaking balls, Coney. For a guy that throws 100, he sure loves his little slider slash curveball. A 2 0. Rising fastball misses, three balls, no strikes. And you can pitch all you want in the regular season, bring them in, try to simulate a closeout game in Fenway Park. But until you're in that moment, like Ken Giles is now for the first time, completely different animal. Three oh. Strike one. Rain has started to fall again for the first time in probably an hour and a half. It's a light rain, but Chances of heavy rain throughout the day today. A 3 1 pitch. That's gets it off the end of the bat. It's a full count. We check in with JP. Well, Joe, we discussed in the last half inning the ball that Evan Gaddis hit down the third baseline, and if the Red Sox would have reviewed it. This play is not reviewable because it landed in front of the third base umpire. So the Red Sox did not have the option of reviewing it. All right, JP. That's leading off this eight. And staying out alive against 100. I stand corrected. Thank you, JP. A few things I'd like to correct them that they're coming out of my mouth in this series so far. A payoff. And another foul. Orland and Ramirez to follow in this inning against Giles. That's getting a good look at him here. This would be the eighth pitch. A tapper back to the mound, and Giles wins this battle for the first out. The ALDS on FS1 is presented by Doosan, official partner of Major League Baseball. And is sponsored by Taco Bell. Sometimes you've got to live moss. Yeah, by the Home Depot. More saving. More doing. Astros getting two runs in the top of this inning, both charged to Chris Sale. A go ahead run coming on a base hit from Reddick against Craig Kimball. With one out, it's Mitch Moreland. Hard hit. Bregman's there. Two gone. The 
Giles with a couple of ground outs to start the inning and now Hanley Ramirez comes up. Quite a comeback for Giles right here after falling down three and oh to Mookie Betts all the way back to get him out eventually on a three two slider then a one pitch out for the second one and here you go Hanley Ramirez. Strike one. Uh, Ramirez has been so aggressive all series, and it's worked for him for a lot of this series, but here puts him in an 0 1 hole. Well, he's cheating for the 100 mile per hour fastball, and Giles starts him out with the slider, so if you got to cheat to get to the 100, a well located slider, especially early in the count, is tough to adjust to. Off the end of the bat, Giles has it, and he works a 1 2 3 8th inning on three ground ball outs to the ninth inning. We go at Fenway. The Astros with two runs in the eighth inning and now lead 4 3, one win from a trip to the championship series. Grip the moment, sponsored by Falcon Tires, the official tire of Major League Baseball. Alex Bregman on his first swing as a postseason player took Chris Sale deep in game one. And this time around, seeing a tiring sale in relief in his fifth inning of work, ties the game with a shot over the monster. Have a day against Chris Sale. Have a series against Chris Sale, Alex Bregman, and a changeup. First one was a slider and a changeup. Chris Sale's third best pitch gets him beat possibly be, ends the Red Sox season. Greg Kimbrell stays in there middle of the Astros order trying to get some insurance here and Carlos Correa goes after a first pitch curve for strike one. Strike two. Tony, we've talked about this over and over about how easy it is to second guess, but Kimbrell, a closer, likes clean innings. You had Addison Reed hot. Did he stick with Chris Sale too long? I, I know he was dealing. There's baseball is amazing. There's just all these questions you can always have. Correa chases and misses here for the first down of the night. And on the other side obviously the whole Justin Verlander situation and was that the right move or not second guessable. It's the right move when it works right yeah, absolutely but when you make moves and you make bold moves which both these managers have done today it opens you up to so many questions especially in Boston and in Houston A.J. Hinch has pulled all the right all the right strings this entire season so. It's just fun. It's fun to be able to ask those questions. One out. Marvin Gonzalez, the hitter. Yeah, and he swings and misses strike one. Do you think, though, that as, and it seems like the answer is yes as I ask this, but as you see more and more teams willing to bring the bullpens into the game earlier and earlier, it becomes easier to make those decisions to do it because you're not going to stand out if it goes wrong? It seems like, yeah, that's a great point, Joe. It seems like the argument's on the other side. Why don't you use your super your relievers sooner? Why don't you make more changes? Take more chances, so to speak. Ten, twenty years ago, the argument was leave the starter in more. Trust your trust trust Jack Morris going ten innings in a game in a final game of a World Series. Oh, that would never happen. There's no chance that would happen. Smoltz and Morris in 91, game seven, never happened today. Gonzalez got hit on the back foot by that one. And the Astros with a one out base runner. Back foot slider. Every pitching coach would tell righties that the lefties throw that back foot slider. Well, 
That is a back foot slider and Marwin Gonzalez will have the the wound to prove it. That is going to swell up on the plane ride back to Houston and. He won't mind it that much if his score stays the same. He also got hit in the first inning in the four on. So here is one of the heroes today for the Astros if it does remain 4 3. Alex Bregman going after the first one from Kimbrell, strike one. But just to kind of put a bow on that, you know, that point you brought up, Joe. Yeah, I mean, obviously a lot of analytics today. There's a lot of mathematical equations that you can use as ammunition for the right moves to make when and where and who. Definitely an evolving game with regard to decision making. More than ever before. Strike two on Bregman. Times they are changing, and we we witnessed it. It kind of started, really, really started last year in the in the playoffs, and especially the World Series with the Cubs and the and the Indians. They could not wait to get to. The, I mean, Hendricks is throwing a no hitter into the fifth inning, and he gets taken out of a game. It, and he was dealing. So it's like, okay, let's hurry up and get to the bullpens. Whereas for so long, like you said, Coney, let's see how long our starter can go. Not anymore. Today, Rick Porcello went three innings as they tossed out a first not in time. Three innings was the second longest outing by a Boston starter in this series. And they were begging for five. They got three. And Charlie Morton, who was giving up one run and was kind of cruising for a while, they, they took him out of the game with the lead in the fifth inning and brought in Verlander. So just the way of the game today. A ball and two strikes on Bregman. Here comes Kimbrell. With ball two. And part of that is there's so many great relievers out there nowadays. The volume of relievers and the hard throwers. That part of the game certainly has evolved. Used to be all the extra players were on the bench. Now they're out in the bullpen. Alex Bregman takes ball three. And a bullpen used to be where the starters that couldn't handle starting went. Now guys are brought up and signed as relievers. They start in high school and in college. Hey, you're going to be a closer. You're going to be an eighth inning guy when you when you get to the minor leagues and you get to the big leagues. Addison Reed was Steven Strasburg's closer in college. It's in San Diego. So it starts younger and younger. The payoff. There goes Gonzalez on a foul ball. Well, looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth inning for Boston, they've got the bottom third of the order with Devers, Vasquez, and Bradley. And normally you say, uh oh, if you're a Red Sox fan, but remember, coming into the day, all 14 runs scored in this series by the Red Sox have been driven in by that part of the order. Today it's come from the top. Bogarts a solo home run out of the two spot. Benintendi, a two run homer out of the three spot. Foul back in our direction. Bregman stays alive. We we're talking about Alex Bregman's confidence. Borders on cockiness, and I'm sure that he would be quick to tell you that. But it takes a little bit of that to come up with your team down by one run facing Chris Sale to be able to act the way he was acting in the box, exuding that confidence, and turn a pitch around to turn a game around. I like it. I like it. Why not? Why is that a bad thing? Why? Why? It's not. Dustin Pedroia, same way. Now hits this fly ball to center near the triangle. It's Bradley. He's got it. Gonzalez thought about it and holds on. Oh, well, the three home runs that have been hit today by the Red Sox. T-Mobile will be donated an additional by the Red Sox and the Astros. T-Mobile will be donated an additional thirty thousand dollars for hurricane recovery efforts. Forty home runs total this postseason across baseball. That's four hundred thousand dollars 
Hurts Hurricane recovery efforts. And you can help break $1 million yourself by tweeting hashtag HR4HR. And T-Mobile will donate an additional $1 per tweet. With two outs, it's Guriel. Frank Kimbrell, who's not thrown more than 33 pitches in a game this season, is about to throw his 30th. Guriel knifes one into right. Another base hit for him. Guriel, home run shy of the cycle today after he had four hits yesterday. With the right handed Kimbrell on the mound instead of Evan Gaddis, here's Carlos Beltran. A little bit surprising that A.J. Hinch decided to go with Gaddis instead of Beltran today when you looked at the career numbers that Beltran has put up against the Boston starter Rick Porcello. He liked the matchup with Gaddis, and so brings Beltran, the 20 year veteran, off of the bench. We were just talking about the everything T-Mobile's doing to help with the hurricane recovery efforts. Carlos Beltran donated one million himself to Hurricane Maria relief efforts, helped raise another 300,000, and with the help of the Astros owner Jim Crane, organized a couple of planes carrying more than 300,000 pounds of supplies down to Puerto Rico, which of course is Beltran's home country. Two on and two out. He takes ball one. For all the devastation that's come out of all these hurricanes and all these disasters, the, the way people have come together, Carlos Beltran, J.J. Watt for Houston, it's been pretty remarkable, and it's something we need to do as much as possible, not only in disasters, but just in general. It's a great point. You know, people still hurting in Puerto Rico right now. I played winter ball down there a couple of years. And that's where I learned how to pitch, really. It got me to the big leagues, and there's so many great players from Puerto Rico that have had such a big impact on the game. Fouled off, and it's one and two. Four three game here in the ninth inning. Astros scoring twice in the eighth to take the lead. Two and two. Again in the bottom of the ninth, it'll be Ken Giles' first postseason save opportunity, trying to lock that down. Now 2-2 two -two from Kimbrell, and it's fouled back. Looked pretty good in the eighth inning. Three quick ground outs. And we'll face the bottom third of the Boston order right now in what is a one run game. It's a rare territory for a closer having to hang out in the dugout getting ready to go out again. And the waiting's the hardest part. Kimball ready for another 2 2. Breaks his bat. Late protective swing, he stays alive. These are some at bats the Astros are putting on Craig Kimball. Craig Kimball's used to coming in and going one, two, three, one, two, three, strikeout, strikeout, one, two, three, striking out everybody. 
the Astros are fighting him tooth and nail here to try to get one more run and give Ken Giles a two run lead going to the ninth. But man these are some great at bats. It's true it's a common theme all year and in this series this Astros lineup is relentless. Gonzalez at second Guriel at first another two two to Beltran. Flip to left field Benintendi's back on it at the track he runs out of room and it's off the monster. RBI double for Carlos Beltran to give Houston some insurance. Any other park that's a fly out. Well you called it I mean good at bat Beltran just could not be put away the value of contact once again and playing wall ball here in Fenway he tried everything went back to the breaking ball and that ball's outside that's not a bad pitch as Beltran went out and covered it got it up in the air and off the wall. That's going to finish the day for Craig Kimbrell. Houston has scored three unanswered. They lead it 5 3 here in the ninth inning. Addison Reed comes on to face Brian McCann and delivers a strike. The runners in second and third and two out after the pinch hit. RBI double from Carlos Beltran to double the lead for the Astros. Now McCann off of the hands into short center field. Long way to go for Bradley, but he's under it. And that does it for the Astros. They add one and put the pressure on the bottom of the Boston order. Three outs from a trip to the ALCX. Houston five Boston three last chance for the Red Sox. Ken Giles looking for a two inning save to send the Astros on to the American League Championship Series. He's done it successfully twice this season and he's ready to face the bottom of the Red Sox order. It's Devers Vasquez and Bradley. Single and a walk today for Devers. A fastball for strike one. Giles got three ground outs on only 11 pitches in the eighth inning and starts Devers with a strike here in the ninth. This is where it starts sinking in, Coney, as a player. You're down two in the ninth. The other team's closer is out there. All the hard work for the whole season right here. Devers fouls it off, strike two. And on the bench you need a base runner where you can get to within one swing a, a, a tie in this ball game. And if there's any you have any superstitions or anything that you're holding back now you, you throw them all out there you try anything. Just keep the season alive. It did for one day yesterday winning game three to force this fourth game. A line drive to deep center field that sends Springer back onto the track. It's off the wall. It ricochets wildly. Devers on his horse. He's given the wave. He starts the ninth with an inside the park home run. AJ Hinch out for a visit. The Red Sox within one. Nobody out. Almost looked like a football huddle there at the mound, right? And AJ Hinch came in, came out, and the whole infield came around to try to rally 
their closer Giles, but only at Fenway Park, AJ, do you see a play like that? Springer overran it. We talked about it yesterday in the game yesterday. The backup by Mookie Betts on a ball to Jackie Bradley in, in that in that corner area. So it comes into play for the Red Sox. But now, how big was that hit by Carlos Beltran to give him that insurance run? Christian Vasquez. Strike one. And honestly, there's nothing hurt for the Astros other than, yeah, we gave up a run, but they're still in the lead. So all the excitement, everything from the fans, it doesn't matter if the Red Sox don't score another run. Vasquez, five home runs in the regular season. Some big ones down the stretch. Ground ball left side. Stopped by Bregman. Spins and throws to get him for the first down. The third postseason inside the park home run in Boston Red Sox history. The slider out over the plate from Giles and Devers just absolutely drilled it. Springer caught in between, thought he could make the play, could not get up high enough, and then of course the backup. Nobody home except for Devers. One out, nine hitter, Jackie Bradley. Home run yesterday. Goes after the first pitch, strike one. Mentioned there have been two other inside the park home runs in Boston postseason history. Well, the last one was in 1916. Well, Larry Gardner did it. Pretty familiar year for Red Sox fans there, 1916. 0 1. Got a piece of the umpire Wagner. One ball, one strike. I'm sure, there's a lot of people out there that remember that game. Tony, you probably you might have pitched in it, but the pre Bambino curse days. Yeah. This park was just a few years old at that point. Red Sox try to create another postseason memory in Fenway Park. Down to their final two outs. Down 5-4 in game four. A check swing foul and it's one and two. And it'll be ironic if Jackie Bradley somehow manages not to get on base. Dustin Pedroia, the lineup switch we talked about before the game. Pedroia, this is why one of the reasons John Farrell wanted Pedroia there. He could come up with a chance to extend their season or or end it. Giles delivers one two. Taken by Bradley low. Two balls two strikes. There's the owner and the chairman sitting right next to the Astros dugout Jim Crane. Right next day Jay Hinch. The Astros are two outs away from their first postseason series win since the 0 5 run to the World Series. Giles to Bradley with a 2 2. He couldn't lay off. And tagged out by Brian McCann. The Astros now one out away. Our Hankook Tire Dynamic play of the game. Josh Reddick broke a 3 3 tie with an opposite field, two out. Two strike hit against Craig Kimball. They added insurance with the RBI double from Carlos Beltran. The insurance has proven to be huge because the Red Sox have gotten one here in the ninth. It falls on the shoulders of Dustin Pedroia. Strike one.
That's up ball one. Two years ago, Houston Astros snapped a nine year drought by returning to the postseason and were on the verge of winning the American League Division Series against Kansas City when that eighth inning bit them. Forced a game five. They lost game five. Season ended. The eighth inning of game four, a much different story this time around. It's two and one on Pedroia. They got the two runs to take the lead. The Bregman game tied homer, the Reddick go ahead single. The added run of insurance in the top of the ninth has it at 5 4. Tie and run at the plate. Boston down to its final out. Two and two on Dustin Pedroia. He stays alive despite 99 from Giles. The longest tenure to the Red Sox. Trying to keep hope alive. 2 2. Lays off. Full count. Pedroia fighting back, AJ. <laughs> not going down without a fight. He, never a doubt with Pedroia out there. He's not, he's not going to quit. And a visit from McCann. I'm going slider here Coney 3 2 slider it's been his best pitch for the whole season for Giles so would not be surprised to three see a 3 2 slider. Yeah and already two swings and misses in this particular at bat on sliders. If Pedroia can reach Xander Bogarts would bat. And at that point would represent the go ahead and winning run. Giles payoff. I think Pedroia was thinking right along with us a little late on the fastball but you can't blame him. Houston tantalizingly close one strike away. Giles home with another 3 2. That's hard hit to second. The Astros are moving on to the American League Championship Series. They come from behind to win it in four games, scoring two in the eighth and one in the ninth. Ken Giles two innings to get the save to give the Astros their first postseason series win since 2005 and to help Jose Altuve and the members of that 2015 team erase that tough memory of losing the division series to Kansas City that man there and Carlos Correa who had the critical error that helped open the door for the Royals come back in game four and in the case of Altuve. Who walked into A.J. Hinch's office following that series, one where he did not hit well, with tears in his eyes, blaming the loss on himself. 
And they're all hoping there's some more tears in his eyes a couple of weeks down the road for a much different reason. The Red Sox season comes to an end. And the Astros take this one in four games to advance to the American League Championship. What a performance by the Astros to come back against the dealing Chris Sale, show the guts, Alex Bregman, a huge home run, Carlos Beltran off the bench with a huge double for insurance. What a performance. The Astros deserve it. They were the better team in this entire series. Just a relentless effort from the Astros. And you got to give the Red Sox credit, too. You know, they, they came back. They did not go down without a fight. We got a little preview who JP is about to talk with JP with Josh Reddick. Thank you Joe. Josh Reddick you put your team ahead against one of the best closers in the world in the eighth inning. How did you do it. Just tried to grind away swinging good pitches. You know that's the whole plan for me. The whole year was just trying to swing a good pitches. He's throwing 100 up there with a good curveball and I was telling our hitting coach this is the first time I've choked up all year before I got the hit so it ended up working out for us. So how did you manage those emotions. <laughs> I didn't. I saw it at first base and got really excited. But you know, it's just about taking a few deep breaths up there in the box, not letting the crowd get into your head, and just you know trying to focus and find your happy place, and just not really focusing on what's going on. Just trying to be you and the pitcher and work on that kind of tunnel vision. And Josh, last one for you. How do you describe today and yesterday for you? <laughs> much better. Much better for me. I uh, could have done a better job backing up that ball in the ninth, and uh, fortunately it didn't hurt us. So, uh, but uh, glad I got some positives out of the way today. Josh, congratulations and joys with your teammates. Thanks so much. Thank you. Back to you guys. All right, JP, we appreciate Josh's time as the Astros finish off the Red Sox in four games, avoiding a game five trip back to Houston. It's Altuve fitting that he has the assist for the final out after what was such a tough trip through the ALDS in 2015. Same thing for Carlos Correa over the year that he committed in game four. Able to celebrate this win here. Both those guys hitting multiple home runs in this division series. Right now we get you to Los Angeles for more MLB postseason coverage.